panel this morning also. Uh, among us, we have uh, Dr. Jagannathan, who had been in the AIMS, head, who headed the AIMS, and now he is here. He is a renowned uh, uh, science, medical scientist. The detail of uh, introduction of him will be made by our president, uh, Professor G. Park Sarthi, who will be chairing this session also. The second speaker is uh, Professor Rana Pratap Singh. I welcome you all in this uh, uh, morning pleasant session for being started at, uh, though it should be started at nine, but we are a little late, we were looking for. So we'll have two eminent scholars here, and uh, may I hand over mic to Professor Parsarthi ji to introduce our uh, speaker. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. May I now introduce Dr. N. R. Jagannathan, Professor of Eminence of Radiology. Dr. Jagannathan is a Professor of Eminence and Head of the Department of NMR and MRI, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He was honored recently by the International Society for Magnetic Resonance in Medicine, ISMRM, in fact, he is the first scientist from the Asia subcontinent to be elected as Fellow of ISMRM for his contributions to the magnetic resonance imaging and spectroscopic studies on breast cancer and service to the ISMRM. There is something called United Nations General Assembly throughout the world. 2022 has been declared as the basic science for sustainable development. How the basic science is helpful to health science, water, everything, but basic science is most important. So in that context, we are organized this meeting of uh, environment, energy and health. Of course, I want to bring the best people to present so that students get benefited. Professor N.R. Jagannatham, who is my friend for the last 32 years, he is the first person to best of my knowledge did NMR, it's nuclear magnetic resonance in the world. Solid state NMR, he is the first person in, from India who did. And Later, he joined All India Institute of Medical Sciences, which is the premier medical science institute in the country. And um, Professor Jagannathan, also vice, vice president of Indian National Science Academy, dealing with finance. Most uh, painful job, but he has managed it very well. And I keep knowing him, we interact with various INSA meetings also. And he is one of the outstanding scientists, very simple, down to earth person. You know, all ladies get breast cancer, or men get um, prostate cancer, but the x-rays cannot be done, used there. It is really damages the tissues. Brain particularly, any brain problem, you cannot do with the x-ray. Uh, we have to do magnetic resonance imaging where the hydrogen NMR plays a major role and he is the country specialist. He dealt with a lot of uh, ministers, prime ministers, various people dealing with that. He was unique. I am telling you the Crescent is lucky to have him as a plenary speaker. So I invite uh, to Professor Jagannath. Are you able to, yeah, yeah, you can reduce the volume. So good morning, everybody. So I'm just uh, about 20 kilometers from here. I used to pass through this road and then used to see Crescent. And then uh, this is an opportunity for me to 
actually interact with the students. When uh, somebody is introduced like what uh, Dr. Marsadi and the anchor they did, then it puts a lot of pressure on the speaker. Okay, they pump in all unwanted things, so you get really worried. So before I start uh, giving this lecture, uh, I don't know how many of you took breakfast here. So you have idli, you have vada, pongal, chutney, sambar. So if you take pongal, is a deadly combination with vada. So if you want to go to sleep, wherever you are, either at the back or at the front, I will not disturb you. You can go to sleep. I will wake you up after uh, Dr. Harina Raina was very helpful to me. He said you can take 10 minutes extra. So I will wake you up after that time. And the beauty is that still you would have understood what I have talked. That is the beauty of uh, nuclear magnetic resonance. I will give you an example, Partha. Uh, inauguration, there will be 500 people. Now it will be 100. So there is an exponential decay. So the magnetization, once it is energized, after some time it has to relax, right? So 500 people have come to 100 people. And that 200 people, we have to call them. So, it's very easy to understand. And what I am going to do in the next 30 minutes is only to give you a flavor of what this physical technique of nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, has revolutionized the field of medicine completely. It not only revolutionized the field of medicine, but it revolutionized the field of chemistry, biochemistry, biology, material science, you name it, you have it. That's the powerful nature of this uh, particular technique. But when it came to medicine, even a common man across the road, DST road going, you ask him, interview 10 people, at least five of them, yeah, I have been referred to MRI, MIR, something they will say, magnetic resonance imaging. So it became a buzzword in the public, which actually revolutionized the field of uh, radiology, Hence, the field of medicine. My training basically is physics. But what I am going to talk is something different, what I actually studied in my younger days. The reason why I am telling is that sky is the limit for learning. So when I joined All India Institute of Medical Science in 1993, when the new department was created, I took the permission of the director of the AIMS and sat in the anatomy class for one year. So because I know that my future is going to be in medicine, and if I don't know the anatomy, then how can I talk about anything? So don't have any limits uh, in your life, especially with regard to learning and uh, uh, teaching. When we teach every time, no, some student will ask a stupid question. That becomes an eye-opener for us as a teacher, because we would never have thought about that at all in our life. Very, very simple question. I said, why did I answer so shabbily? I should have answered to him in a different way so that the student would have understood this one. So sky is the limit for learning. Ocean. Learning is ocean. So um, after my retirement, I moved to Chattinada Hospital as a professor of eminence in radiology. You see, my affiliation in radiology. But I did physics. And then I am also a visiting professor in uh, Rob Chandra, and see the last affiliation in electrical engineering. Because the magnetic resonance imaging is a field which is a culmination of all the fields of science, technology, and engineering. You name it, you have it in an MRI machine. And we need domain experts in each of these fields to build an MRI. Until that is done, you cannot achieve that. So it is a very vast field, and I am not an expert in all of them. MRI itself is a ocean. I have only done certain small things. That's all I have done, basically. Now, if you take, for example, the patient management, when you go to a hospital, you have some kind of a disease or ailment, the first thing that the physician will recommend for you is X-ray. Simple X-ray, which all of you know, 1895, Ranjan discovered it. And then you have the simple X-ray. And then if you have... Uh, by a breast cancer, naturally the mammography, and then ultrasonography can be used for any of the diseases. Then if you have a prostate cancer, then you do trust biopsy of the prostate. 
and then you do the simple basically biochemical test for prostate cancer which is called as PSA prostatic specific antigen to do it in there and then PET CT positron emission tomography and then computer tomography then of course the gold standard in medicine is only the histology so whatever the diagnostic diagnostic test that I have pointed out here has to be correlated with, with uh, histology because we don't have any other gold standard because when you take out the tissue or the liquid or the CSF liquid or the blood you confirm it actually with that one. So histology but it is an invasive one basically histology is invasive you need to take out the tissues or blood even taking blood is invasive in nature and then of course the MRI and MRS. Once a person is diagnosed with some kind of a disease, then naturally the next one is that the physician will start therapy. It can be chemotherapy if the tumor size is uh, very big like in breast cancer. If the tumor is very big, we need to reduce in size before they operate on it. And then the radiotherapy, it can be done after surgery or before surgery depending upon uh, the physician evaluation of the patient. And of course surgery to remove the whole lung of the tumor and then hormonal therapy and during this period of uh, treatment one has to actually assess whether the patient is responding to the tumor with respect to the treatment that is given to the patient that is very essential because all drugs do not actually act in the same way dr parthardi i know he gets really relieve of his headache with the paracetamol but jagannathan cannot get rid of the uh, headache with the uh, paracetamol, I need ibuprofen. Same headache, different individuals have a different set of physiology which will act in the system and then get relieved of the pain or whatever. So the treatment, even though maybe protocol may be same, but each individual is different because each individual physiology is different and we behave in a different way. In fact, medicine basically, if I can make a general statement, not to be quoted, is based on statistics. 100 persons come to me for treatment. I give paracetamol, 80 percent get over. So I prescribe to you. It doesn't mean that all the 100 will do it because the physiology is different. So basically medicine is a statistically based thing. So the assessment of a particular treatment regimen given to a patient need to be assessed at frequent interval so that the doctor will know whether the patient is responding to the tumor or not. So that is normally done by clinical assessment. Uh, like for example, if you take breast cancer, what we basically the physician do that, the lump will be there, he will just press it and see whether the diameter is reduced, whether the spherical thing has reduced in size or not. So that is clinical assessment, it is more subjective, not objective. And then of course you need to use the other uh, modality, diagnostic modality like PET, CT, MRI, diffusion rate EG, even x-rays, mammography to find out that one. As I told you, the response to therapy is highly variable in individuals, indicating the need for patient tri uh, tailored treatment. That is the future. Basically, that is what the future is going to be. Now, this magnetic resonance imaging is a daughter of the main field, nuclear magnetic resonance which was invented by poor physicists like me way back in 1940s. And then later it was hijacked by Kenneth seeing the potential of the nuclear magnetic resonance to identify certain functional group of molecules. So the chemist hijacked it. How? An organic chemist, correct. He synthesized a compound. When he synthesizes a compound and then incorporates a, a methyl group into the synthesis, then he has to find out whether basically the methyl group has been incorporated or not. Methyl group is CH3, right? Simple CH3 group. So he runs an NMR to find out whether the methyl group has been in, uh, actually incorporated. He gets a peak there. So he found it very useful. Then after finding this is very useful for chemists, then the biochemist started using it for the biological molecules to solve the structure of the macromolecules like proteins, nucleic acid, enzymes, etc. that are all found in human body. Reason is that why is structure and conformation 
of any biological molecule is important. Unless you know the structure and conformation, you cannot define drugs. There are so many drugs. Actually, when we come across evaluating projects, many people say, I have done computational thing. I have now screened thousands of compounds, 10,000 compounds, million compounds, but not all million compounds come to the market, only one. For one drug to come to market, it takes billions and billions of dollars. Reason? It has to interact with the, the system, the human biological system, physiological system. Then only it will act on that. So the structure and confirmation becomes very useful. So the biochemist hijacked the NMR, invented by poor physicists like me, not me. I would have got the Nobel Prize for that, right? I'm not that potential. So then what happened? In late 1970s and 1980s, a chemist and a physicist found that this nuclear magnetic resonance is very useful for me to identify the difference between a malignant tissue, malignant means cancer, all cancer need not be malignant, but malignant is cancer. Okay, cancer can be benign, benign means it is it's not harmful, but if you don't treat a benign tumor, it can become a malignant. So the distinction between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor can be easily be found out by the technique NMR. In NMR, there are two kinds of relaxation. What happens in NMR basically? I, do, I, I, I was told that most of them are pharma, pharmacy and life science students, so you should be knowing it. I just briefly tell you what it is. Very, very, very simple. That's why I asked you to go to sleep. I, any teacher or speaker would ask the students to go to sleep. I am the only one who will do that. Go to sleep. I will wake up and you will still understand the NMR. You put a human body in a magnet. The body weight of a human being, 60 to 70 percent comes from the water that is present in the tissue. What is water made of? H2, hydrogen, oxygen. What is hydrogen? Number one, element in the periodic table. What does the nucleus of hydrogen have? Nucleus, as well. and the proton, and the electron. So when you put the human body in an external magnetic field, the hydrogens that are present in the water in tissues, or in fat in tissues, get energized or magnetized. Right? Very simple. It, it experiences the magnetic field. Now, you are all students, right? Most of you are students. What do we do? The teachers are very obnoxious characters. We don't keep quiet. No, after six months, we give an exam. Why do we need to give an example? Tell me. Simple reason. Why? You are a student of 100 in a class. How do I know who has understood the subject that has been taught to you better than others? So what we do? We give an exam. The exam is a perturbation. So I perturb you to find out and evaluate you to find out whether you have understood the subject that has been taught to you by the teacher in the class. So similar way, my objective or aim is to find out whether the hydrogens that are present in the human tissues in the form of water and fat, whether they have some characteristic changes between tumor and normal. It is my objective. The moment I put them in a magnetic field, they get only magnetized. But I don't understand. So what I do is that I give an external RF field, radio frequency field, to the human body. Remember one thing. Proton, basic science, school science, is positively charged. Electron is negatively charged. Anything that is charged cannot be fired simple. I am now charged up to this electron. I cannot keep quiet. I, 40 minutes, sir, honorarium they think, then I will go home. So I am now energized. I am now, so I am perturbed to give a lecture. So now you can evaluate me. So similar way when we give the RF field to the human tissues, it will be get excited. And you, we don't give the exam for more than three hours. Three of us is enough for us to evaluate you for what we have under, what we taught for six months. 
similar way this rf is given only for few seconds milliseconds that is enough for us the moment hydrogens of the human uh, that are present in the human tissues in the form of water and such get magnetized and energized and i stop it they will come back to the equilibrium position after the lecture what you will do you will relax i will also relax so this relaxation mechanism is a very important phenomena not only in nmr but in mr in mr it is the one that is being used left and right and there are two types of relaxation don't worry too much into that because i may get i may screw your knowledge already that you have and my own knowledge also spin lattice relaxation spin spin so we are back again coming back to the story of 1979 when a physician turned a physicist professor damadian find out that malignant breast tissue cancer breast tissue has a different relaxation type compared to normal tissue that was the beginning of mri now this technique of mri is completely non invasive what does it mean you see the various medical imaging techniques that i pointed out to you and this is the electromagnetic spectrum so if you are having an x ray or a mammography it uses a very high energy rays high frequency so if we subject them that is what professor parsadi was telling number of times the patient to x ray the tissues can get damaged very easily but you see the magnetic resonance rf frequency is very much less compared to the x rays or gamma rays so i can subject the patient several times inside an mri scanner to get an image nothing happens because the rf energy that i am giving is only heats up the tissue if i do the experiment continuously for 15 minutes there is only 0.2 degree centigrade that increase in this scrotum scrotum of a human being is a very sensitive part that increases only by 2 degree 0.2 degree centigrade so as long as the patient pays to us we can subject them to n number of times so that is one of the reasons why it is called non invasive so we don't give any injection we don't ask them to do anything so everything is completely safe reason why you are all in an environment of electromagnetic radiation you are sitting i am standing in an electromagnetic radiation right can you disprove it but i will prove it if i now have a trans receiver or a tv i can switch on to any frequency the eyes are not seeing what the ztv did but when i have a receiver which can tune to that particular frequency my eyes sees the picture if i turn into aar station chennai music is coming if i have the frequency that particular frequency then my ears hear that but it is all in this way anything happens to you no same way you put a, a human being in a magnet and then give the rf only for few milliseconds repeatedly and then you get an image nothing happens to them so it is completely non invasive so basically this magnetic resonance image is gives a high resolution picture of the human body i will give you some examples now take it for what i am done so don't ask any question because i have donkeys years have spent in this field 40 years of this so whatever like a sermon you take it then it gives a superior soft tissue contrast just concentrate on the word superior in english no every word has a meaning and how you use the word at what place is it an appropriate word to be used or not i could have very easily told soft tissue contrast is good you know but i put superior superior with respect to what superior cannot be a stand alone word in english with respect to the other imaging modalities as of today like ct pet and etc so the basic principle is because we are exciting the hydrogens that are present in the human tissue water and fat so that's why we get a very very clear picture of that and not only that i get the imaging in all the planes simple i am standing now i want to get a mri of my brain if i get an M the head cut like this then it is an axial plane if i cut my head like that then it is sagittal if i cut my head like that it is coronal 
You have a mango? Cut like that axis. Cut like that side. Cut like that before. So all the plane, three planes, I can do that. It is not still possible in other images. Because technology is different in each one of them. And then these images I have n number of times told. And then it is no ionizing radiation we use, so it is not there. So ideally, you can put anything into the magnet and get an image. Like for example, I can put puppies, cats, mouse, rat, human being, heart, elephant we cannot put it because unfortunately the magnet. But anything you can put it there. That is one of the reasons why MRI is so powerful for preclinical research. Whatever example that I am going to give you today, all have been done on animal models before it came into humans. Okay, that is the beauty of NMR. Not because I am practicing it. So you can get an image of the head like what I have shown. You can get the image of the heart. You can get the image of the knee. You can get, get the image of the axis. I can get the complete image of the spinal cord which I have shown. And not only that, I can also find out the blood flow which is called MR angiography. Angiography, everybody would be knowing it, right? If you have a heart attack, myocardial infection, MI, first thing they do angiography. Basically, it is called as DSA, Digital Subtraction Angiography. What do they do? They put a catheter through the veins from the thigh and then take it to heart and then find out through a camera whether there is any blood or not. It's an invasive procedure. Patient can and has collapsed on the table when angiography is done because if it ruptures the blood vessels, then it is uncontrollable. Pa patients have died in the initial uh, stages of development of MR. But nothing will happen here. The patient, only requirement is that the patient has to go lie down inside the magnet in a still form, no movement. Movement is a bad, but otherwise he has to, he can go to sleep. Like you people, some of you are already going to sleep. Because I am in a different pedestal, I can see who are all sleeping. But then I won't wake them up. It's not ethical for me to wake them up. Because they are thinking something which I don't think. Right? Now, so anything, anybody, anything you can get. So this is what I was telling. Images in R3 are not good. So this is the axial image. That means cutting my head like this. And this is the image in the corona, cutting my head like that. And this is the image, sagittal, cutting my head, head like that. If anybody at the bottom, uh, at the uh, back or front see something abnormality, please don't discuss with me because it's my head. And later only said Dr. Rajina Rana, I found that it doesn't function. Brain. Only after MRI, I found that my brain doesn't function. So it is very useful to find out whether the brain functions or not. Now, so basically this T1 and T2 I already introduced in a different context of twin lattice relaxation and twin spin relaxation. They are time constants, that's all. The moment the protons are energized by an RF field, when they are placed in a magnetic field, once it is stopped, they relax back to the equilibrium position. Coming back to the equilibrium position depends upon the human physiology. Different parts of the brain tissue itself will have different time constants. Beauty of this NMR. Beauty. It's simple beauty. Madam, I know you are not able to understand. Because my I don't myself understand. See here. Are you able to identify the full corpus callosum, frontal lobe, medulla oblongata, spine, white matter? I have studied, in my, I have never studied, sorry, because I am a physics, chemistry, mathematics background. So I don't know, don't know by way. But I have heard people telling the brain contains white matter and gray matter. When I started my career, then I found, oh my God, without opening the skull, I can find out brain matter, white matter looks white, gray matter looks white. But the only thing for me, it doesn't function, gray matter for me. I don't know about you, but it doesn't function. So, this particular relaxation times that I am seeing is different for different regions of the brain. Same brain, same tissue, 
the time constant in cerebellum white matter will be different from the frontal lobe white matter, like what I said. Yes. This will be different from here. God has given this. That's the natural beauty of the technique of that. So that is why that relaxation time constant becomes very useful. And we don't give any contrast agents like dye. You are giving CT dye injection, right? We don't give anything. God is so nice to us that without cutting open, you can see everything inside. Later, I will find you, madam. I don't know your name. You are seeing me. You are good looking, but I am not good looking. But anyway, you are seeing me because I am a lecturer. Right? I, I do this joke in between because to wake up some people who are sleeping at that time. If you want to laugh, laugh loudly so that others can wake up in between. Right? That is good for the teacher. Or else it's very difficult for the teacher to give a talk. Right? Now, so you give this T1, T2 idea, right? Same T1, T2 look different in each one. And when you actually have, I am out of the coverage for that. So, can you, uh, can you uh, move the movie? Yeah, this is how we get the slides. Just in few seconds, we get the complete, uh, you can play it again. Just in few seconds. This is a basically coronal slice, multi slice. So, when we do the experiment, we divide the head to 20 slices, 30 slices, each one of them maybe 3 millimeter, 5 millimeter, etc. Depending upon what I want. So, I will do that. I will get it in just about 3 4 minutes. And then I will use the computer to find out whether anything is abnormal or not. So, now you see the expansion that I have shown on the right side is so very little, little, little less than a millimeter. Like for example, you see that 12. 12 is hypothalamus. Very, very small area. So you can get a very high resolution image. I can go up to 4.4 uh, millimeter, 400 micron thickness. Time will be more, but I can get very exquisite the details of the brain structure. Not only brain, any part of the body. So you can get all the high resolution images. So finding out any abnormality then becomes much easier for us. Right? So um, some examples. Until now, I have only given you some basic principles for the heterogeneous audience that are present here so that you understand what is happening. Nothing very great. If you understand the basics, everything is easy. Right? Cancer is a disease that does not start before it comes. Sure, sure. Many cancers have no manifestations until and unless they basically start giving problem for you by impinging on other structures. But this tanni is only H2O. I am a tea droplet, so sorry. So, I will give you a few examples. See, this is how the anaplastic astrocytoma looks. I have shown you only one slice, but I did make a statement that we get the image in all the three planes, in all the three planes, 20 to 25 slices. That means the whole head volume is covered. So, for easy understanding, I have shown only one. Now, I have in axial plane, that is an axial plane, transverse plane, 20 images. So I can actually find out basically using the coronal image and sagittal image as well, what is the volume of the tumor, what is its location, right? Very useful for the neurosurgeons to operate. This is how the characteristic of glioblastoma looks, this mixed glioma. This is metastatic brain, that means the tumor was elsewhere, but it has spread to brain low grade astroglia and low grade astrocytoma. The each tumor has a characteristic structural and morphological feature which you and I cannot distinguish with the head of this one. Day in and day out they see the images and looking at the images they can do that. But they also need extra uh, tests like biochemical tests and other tests to sort of supplement their initial findings. 
just because for donkey cs i have spent i can also some next time visualize what type of a tumor but i don't have an authority to do any research because i am not a medical qualified doctor very simple now uh, the chairman uh, the president of the indian social science congress told that i have done work in breast cancer i have done work in prostate cancer i am a gender neutral person i like ladies i like men so i took one breast cancer prostate cancer i have been doing this for last two and a half decades in aims okay this is how a breast cancer looks like in a t1 rated image and t2 rated image see the arrow and prostate this is a normal prostate and this is a diseased prostate where the cancer sits over here so most of the prostate cancer arises from the peripheral disc this zone this particular zone and the central gland doesn't do that one social message social science congress so i have to make a poetic justice to this slide i will be making one or two more prostate cancer is an indolent tumor meaning slow growing tumor if some individual has been found out with a prostate cancer today at the early stage he uh, he will live around say for 20 25 years nothing will happen but if a woman was found out with a breast cancer most of the types of breast cancer are very very aggressive and virulent one week may be a very long time that is how the system basically behaves in human beings same type of tumor some people in the early stage types of tumor there are different types of breast cancer different types of prostate cancer they differ different but most of the breast cancer are very very aggressive so my social message for you ladies please don't neglect i have my wife's strength in delhi when i was there she just postponed having the examination 3 weeks because her daughter was undergoing exam she died within one week but 3 weeks was determinant for her life very aggressive tumor some of them very aggressive so don't ever do that a social science congress a social image has been formed so i have done that right so now the problem is as soon as we find a tumor we need to find out whether it is a benign tumor or a malignant tumor how do i find out so especially in breast cancer so it, uh, tumor is here so what we do in these circumstances is that we given extra contrast injection dye oh come on sir don't see me i made a statement i know that no injection is given in mri but we are scientists no sometimes we take back our own thoughts but there are circumstances in which the radiologist is not able to find the clear distinction between the tumor and the normal tissue he is in a dilemma the contrast contrast is the difference between the normal and is not great for him to see uh, maybe mm, no uh, yes like that so under those circumstances a paramagnetic based gadolinium injection or magnesium or even higher but gadolinium is used let me not go into those details the contrast is given and as and when the contrast is given to the patient my uh, so it's okay yeah because some of them are listening to me not all of them are going to sleep so i get energized so okay okay no problem okay now with you people because you have to listen no unfortunately we are all old people so it doesn't matter for us so under uh, when, when we actually give the injection we start the sign so it is in real time as you can find out here as pre, pre, uh, prior to contrast 1 minute 2 minutes 3 minutes like that so we actually make a profile which is not very clear to the back people because they wanted to be at the back so why do you bend down so if 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 it is a malignant tumor cancer real cancer it will immediately pick up this contrast reason is that as what is a tumor what is malignant 
it is basically uncontrolled proliferation of the cells if we can control the multiplication of the cell then cancer would not be there we are not able to control it so when that uncontrolled cell proliferation of the cell, things happen it ruptures the brain blood brain barrier so the membranes get ruptured so when the tumor is there this is a paramagnetic agent i am using a dye contrast injection it goes and attaches it directly to them, not to the normal cells so it enhances so the radiologist ah yes it is a it is a cancer so this has become very very essential for us to distinguish between uh, whether it is a benign tumor or a malignant tumor now another social message is going to be all of us put the bet on oh i had mi cardiac attack oh take it now heart re replacement can be done right my own director professor venugopal is a pioneer in heart transplant everybody would be knowing dr venugopal you cannot read the paper because he had a fight with anubhumani ramdas when he was minister first person and, and i had the opportunity to image that first person who had transplant in india right devi ram his name i think he lived for 10 15 years so you have that sir so comes the brain can you replace the brain so what i have shown in this slide on the left side the person who had stroke ischemic attack we call it see the white patches so much area of the brain are affected so the message for you is that if you come across anybody having a stroke first thing you need to do is to take them to the nearest hospital where mri is done reason is that as and when you prolong the time in taking the patient more and more areas of the brain will get affected here is the place where the motor cortex area is there motor cortex area is the one that controls my hand leg movement i am doing it i am doing it i am touching it now he would do such stroke what happens oh he has a brain stroke oh paraplegia or the hemiplegia or the you cannot move you cannot talk you cannot follow all these things heart can be replaced but brain cannot be replaced and it is a burden on the health system reason he will not die but he will be suffering the whole part of his life not only he or she but the family members so the next take home message social message is that you feel that come across anybody having some weakness in the head weakness in the legs immediately take them to a neurologist and where mri is there mri can find out very easily and what i have shown here is basically the brain contains lot of neurons right each one of them is connected so it is called tractography it looks like an ic circuit so from one neuron to another neuron i can actually trace that one and that is how it looks like in the normal volunteer the white matter fiber in a normal human being would be like that and in a tumor you can see there is no correlation between the left and the right hemisphere see the beauty so be very careful and other thing is that not only brain breast prostate you can do fine here is a patient with a spine abnormality you see this spinal cord here and vertebrae here you see the disease is segmented completely one go i can get this image and this is a case of a vat i have actually removed some of the slides because it is not supposed to be there recording it who's rec recording when it goes to the public then i will be in problem i am already a pensioner they will stop the pension why should i do that so i removed it so a vat came accident can you see the vertebrae in pinches go to operation immediately so such is the very usefulness of that now i give it to the students this one right now with the it industry growing what happens i don't know how many of you will be slowly uh, sundar pichai or somebody but the only thing you people do is sit in front of the idiot box all the time 
right? Then this is one IT professional who converted his office into the home. Completely. This is, it is from a cartoon. And then, oh, it doesn't turn. So I have to go and get. Uh, can you go to the next one? Ah, yeah, yeah. So he uses the money. He doesn't have time. And that too, with this online meeting, they don't give you any time. Why go to the IT professionals? I suffered when the COVID came. Because the government made me DBT, DSP, by right. As chairman of uh, di devices and diagnostics during the COVID, to come up with that. I used to start the meeting at 8 o'clock, end it at 9 o'clock. Went for three to four months like that. I have to do something for the nation, right? Or else whatever education which the nation gave, I cannot give it back. So, he uses a very simple technique, you see, monitor, computer monitor, you use it to shave that one. So, such is the case. And I told you that angiography can be done. So, this is one brain with a all spinal cord, vertebrae and everything. Now, I am now monitoring, this is the heart. From heart, the blood vessels through arteries and veins goes there and you can monitor that very well. Without disturbing the patient. Patient has to go to sleep like some of you are down there. That's all. Now, we are sitting and going to sleep. Here he has to lie down and go to sleep. So, you can have an eyesight, basically. And you see here, heart imaging. So it more or less 80% of the cases where angiography has to be done can now be done by MR, which is not used. See, for example, the coronary artery, this is the coronary artery. If I am very successful, I can monitor the coronary artery. Now, when I do the imaging in the arterial part, you know artery and veins, right? Then in the late venous space, when I subtract even small, small vessels which carry the blood, I can easily monitor. And if there is any abnormality, the cardiac radiologist will find out the abnormality is much easier, right? So, such is the powerful nature of that. Now, I made a statement and realized Dr. Harina Raina, now my brain doesn't function. So, now here's an example. So, monitoring the brain function. Now, most of you might have heard functional MRI, fMRI, to find out the brain functions through MRI, because MRI is non-invasive. Hitherto, the brain which was treated as a black box, now I can actually open it and find out which are all the areas which are responsible for various cognitive factors. I am now talking to you, right? I have, my brain is programmed. After seeing the slides a couple of times, yesterday in this plane when I was coming from Delhi, I went through the slides, which one will come next, which one will come, some kind of a registration, memory is there. So you have a memory present here, somewhere here. This is auditory, I am speaking auditory, you are learning, learning this is the auditory one. This is the motor cortex, I told you, movement of hands. This is visual, I am seeing you, this is visual, and this is the language. Each language has a different brain areas which get activated. Mother tongue, English, Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, everything will have slightly different. So I can now find out what are the areas. When this functional MRI came in 1989, 1990, earlier, people said, ah, it revolutionized the field of neuroscience. Yes, it did. Now, mo more than 150,000 research papers are there only on this cognitive brain functions. So, it will not only solve the problem, but it gave a lot of problems for scientists to solve. So, this is as far as the scientists are concerned, people like me. But what is the clinical significance of that? Suppose a patient comes with a tumor in the visual cortex or in the motor cortex here. Then the neurosurgeon has to think thousands of times before he operates on the patient. Reason? If he removes the tumor here, patient cannot see. Simple, period, no discussion. So he has to see which advantage he will have, whether removing it or leaving it. Let him suffer, but he can still see. So instead of giving solutions, it gave a lot of problems. And that's life anyway. So it's very easy. Here also I removed two slides, two slides here because I don't want to do that. So you can also find out when you are sad, which are all the areas responsible for sad cognition. And if you are in happy mood, which are the areas? Right? Basically, I had one figure of my wife. I have only one wife, I'm telling you. 
but I am already 68, so th there may may not be a possibility for me to have another child. <laughs> no, no, sir. No, you, you, you raised a very nice question. About 15 years back, yeah, yeah, no problem. I am, I am, I am, I am complimenting you for raising this question to me. In Noida, there was an astrologer. We went. I, I with my wife, I went there. It is such bordering. Jhoot nahi hai. Yeah, I know, I know, I will show later. So the problem is, then he told me, no, no, we went for my daughter's mother, okay? But if you want to listen, listen, it's a private conversation, but it's okay, you can listen. Then he said, yes, all resonance. Then he said, you should have second one. Oh my God, I never had it. My wife was sitting, he said, openly said, I went for my daughter's mother. And he said, you should have second wife. I said, God had not given possibility until now. So that's why when she was looking at me, she got a little energized. So it's a rare, rare time happened. Okay. So, so when I see my wife, I used to show that slide. Uh, when I, whenever I become sad when I see my wife, because you are seeing her for the last 40 years, and I put Asim actor, my favorite, and I put it in her hand. Then uh, the director of in the, uh, uh, Nanoscience Center at Chandigarh, I was giving his that he was my friend, A.K. Gauguli, now a professor at IIT Bombay. If your wife is in, in RDL, what you will do? Very simple. I will be very happy if I see my wife. I will be very sad to see Asim. That's it. You change that one. So you can lie also. But the only problem is if you do, it, do a lie with MRI, this is what will happen. You see here, this is a journal publication, IEEE transaction journal, where in US, people use this, but it is not officially approved. I will give you an example. This is the prefrontal uh, cortex. doesn't get activated if you are telling the truth. If you are telling, telling a lie, so do that. Sir, I will give you an example. I will ask that lady, girl, not lady. After Umar Kitanaya, what is your age? She will only say 60. But if I if I am asked, I will immediately say I am 68. So the moment you think and say that you are 18, that time lag is enough for me to find out whether you are lying. See the powerful nature of leave the joke. See the powerful nature of MRI. That few millisecond thing, the blood level change. In fMRI, we monitor the blood level oxygen in a fraction of a second. And that you can do it. But in uh, in USA, people do it for finding out the culprits. Usually. But it is not officially with that one. So now, until now, I have given about MRI, how it can be used to find out tumor, whether it is benign, malignant, how you can do it for prostate, breast cancer, spine, and functional MRI. But this is the only technique which can also give the biochemistry and metabolism of the tumor. I made a statement, my memory is still functioning for 68, that to get one drug, you have to screen thousands of drugs. And the interaction between the drug and the human physiology is the one that really matters, right? What does it mean for lifestyle students? It is the, basically the metabolic changes that are happening. How does a tumor starts growing? Tumor starts growing because of the uncontrollable proliferation of the cells. When there is an uncontrollable multiplication of the cells, it sort of disturbs all the structure, so MRI is actually able to find out. Now, how does it start? Everything has to start from the cellular and molecular level. The changes that you see in MRI cannot come overnight. It is done at the cellular level. Body contains billions and billions of cells. So the cell architect, cell architecture changes completely. When the cell architecture changes completely, then the metabolism changes, biology changes, and the metabolic pathways get affected. So can now use this technique to find out the complete physiology and metabolism of drug in addition to the structural abnormalities we detect. So MR imaging basically is structural information, superior soft tissue contrast, multiplanar, this one. And MR spectroscopy gives biochemical information 
and that is what I explained. This is a normal portion of the brain. I have taken a small region of interest or vertical volume of interest, 20 by 20 by 20 milli, milli cube, 8, 8 ml voxel. From that, I find out N acetyl aspartate is a new uh, amino acid, which is serves as a. Can I finish in five minutes? Is it okay? Five, five minutes? Okay. Because the other speaker could not uh, cut me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I asked them. They gave me time. Oh, no problem, sir. I can finish it now. No problem. So, so this is a inviable cell, but if there is a tumor, it completely changes. So, then now I can devise a drug, which is very good. So, I can talk about the complete uh, uh, the cycle, and each tumor will have each kind of spectral pattern, which can easily be done. Not only that, you can assess the tumor. Second slide that I showed, you can do that. You see here, for example, breast cancer, this is the tumor which is responding, right? Big, after first cycle, third cycle complete. And this is the one which is non-responded. See the tumor, even after third cycle. And this is prostate cancer. Prayer to therapy after 53 weeks, after 190 days. So this is how it looks like. And uh, finally, I think, uh, can you show that how we actually do that and then I will finish off. Yeah, so we put that. This is a heart image we are going to see. So because of general audience, I put a normally two standing also. So nothing very important. So we put the coin in the heart and then landmark. You see the laser and then the patient is uh, uh, this one angiography in real time. See the from heart to the circular place, right? Completely in rotation. So if there is, this is a blood vessel. Okay, if I do in one image, you cannot see what is formed. So if I start doing it in three volume, three dimensional one, the moment it comes, you can find out the difference. Next one. Yeah, so basically to conclude, final message, it revolutionized the field of healthcare because I can get an image from any part of the organ, whether it is head or knee or anything, and also not only that, physiology and everything also. And over the period of three decades in the so many people have uh, contributed, my students and my faculty colleagues of the other departments. I thank uh, DSP and ICMR for this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. There was so much of zeal, energy, information, and humility in your speech. Uh, I now request uh, Dr. T. Hari Narayanan, Organizing Secretary, Host Institution, to present the memento and shawl to our guest. A man of such stature, he deserves a round of applause, please. Uh, friends, now uh, since uh, President Social Science Academy Park Sarthi has to leave with her honorable guest who uh, has given a brilliant lecture before us, and we are we are thankful to him. Now, uh, may I request and Shambhar Shivirao to take on this session further. Uh, and uh, our second speaker will be Professor Rana Pratap Singh. May I ask uh, Anchor to introduce uh, the speaker.
I now take the privilege to uh, introduce our second speaker, Dr. Rana Pratap Singh. Dr. Rana Pratap Singh is a professor, Department of Environmental Science, and also director, IQAC, and Dean Academic Affairs, Baba Saheb Bhim Rao Ambedkar University, Lucknow. He has uh, clinched seven national and state awards for his research and academic contributions. He has contributed significantly in the field of nitrogen, metabolism, and heavy metal toxicity in plants. May I now request him to come to the podium and deliver his speech. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the session our very senior esteemed colleague and dear students. After this very, very exciting lecture and more so, more exciting presentation, I think uh, just the con communication is certainly a challenge, but I will try to be in time and I will try to be uh, communicative, keeping in mind that uh, rather audience is very heterogeneous. See, we are having a very definitive developmental pathway today where we want very, very rapid industrial and economic growth. This is environmentalists understand and always uh, argue it. And I, I would like to uh, underline that nature is much, much mightier than human being. Human being is one species among billions on the earth. So we have to respect the earth system. We cannot fight with earth system and we cannot survive if earth system or ecosystem will not be functional. All rather all uh, cycling of matter and energy are dependent on ecosystem functioning. So once ecosystem functioning will get disrupted, which is getting disrupted very, very badly because of this fast economic growth aligns fast industrial growth. Nature has a bearing capacity. We cannot go beyond that. We must have to realize this. We are having many crisis, economic crisis, environmental crisis, health related crisis, all are related to our uh, non-sustainable developmental growth pathways, which is required to be changed. Climate change and global warming, increasing disasters are alarms. Nature is consistently giving alarms. If you will not hear it, nature will will cause certain situations where the this dominating race can be in very, very much trouble and may be abolished to that. This is one we predict uh, who understand environmental relations and environmental ecosystem functioning requirements more than others. Well, amongst many crises we are observing one is loss of biodiversity because the carbon sources are increasing day by day due to increase in natural deteriorations. In addition to pollution, this biodiversity loss and deterioration in ecosystem are other very important aspect of, uh, say, uh, of, of our problems, economic problems, or uh, say uh, environmental, uh, obviously health related problems and other uh, ecos uh, rather uh, our cultural problems, all are related to ecosystem. Re though, so what we can do, we can go for certain, uh, now United Nations has given a call that it is for one decade that there should be ecological restoration to save earth. So for ecological restoration, 
it has been given re a, a slogan reimagine recreate and reestablishment establish i just want to underline this because what was there in nature when we talk about restoration it sounds that we are going to restore what was there but it is not possible we don't know what was there we don't know which kind of temperature was there which kind of ph was there in earth or in water which kind of uh, abiotic salt compositions and entire uh, abiotic composition wa was there we don't know which kind of biological composition and ecosystem functioning was there it changes because uh, all so several components are there interwoven in ecosystem and it changes with time because uh, all the conditions biological and non biological conditions change due to various reasons so what can we do we can imagine what should be there and what should be uh, beneficial for us we can try to make their maximum diversity nature how, how much below ground diversity bearing will be there uh, the the bearing capacity of soil will be there or water will be there how much bearing capacity of uh, above ground diversity will be there maximum we should acquire and for that we have to try so many combinations uh, in nature uh, whatever is existing at present whatever biological diversity has not lost as yet and it is huge i uh, we have done some work on this and we have tried to develop certain assemblies below ground assemblies and above ground assemblies which can be more useful and i just want to underline that uh, probably this is one way through which we can restore the ecosystems for uh, benefit of human mankind can i get this uh, mark uh, this point thank you thank you okay i think i am i am loud enough okay so uh hmm? okay so the the to topic i have chosen is converting carbon sources into carbon sink by designing novel ecosystems for sustainable ecological economy uh, ecology sustainable ecology and economy so uh, basically the united nations call for uh, for for this uh, uh, ecological restoration require uh, and for uh, agriculture basically i have focus on agricultural sector where uh, it has a focus on finishing hunger to achieve food security with access of non contaminated healthy and nutritional food to all cultivated through sustainable agricultural practices this is important to note this is united nations uh, uh, call and the beneficial soil microbe and crop diversity and adoption of ecological and economic principles can be a significant tool for achieving it so i think certain field experiment on natural farming uh, was uh, the 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 uh, larger in larger context in people's field it was discussed by one of the speaker professor rajender choudhury uh, he is economist uh, he was with this that perspective uh, i am uh, ec uh, rather basically a person of environmental science so i have uh, uh, done uh, experiment in between our uh, my presentation will give certain evidence in between that means one is conceptual science where we understand the scientific working ecosystem functioning in this context he uh, presented uh, it's a uh, it's it's a translation in field here we are we have tried to uh, develop certain evidences to understand how we can make certain combination which can be extended to a uh, field conditions later so i just try to ask certain questions 
कैन वी डेवलप क्लाइमेट रेजिलियंस फॉर इंक्रीजिंग बिलो ग्राउंड एंड एबव ग्राउंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इनहेंस बायोलॉजिकल थिंग्स फॉर कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन दिस इज फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन वी इमेजिन रिक्रिएट एंड एस्टेब्लिश नोवेल इकोसिस्टम्स इन डिग्रेडेड एंड बैरन सॉयल लाइंग अनअटेंडेड कैन वी अचीव एग्रीकल्चरल सस्टेनेबिलिटी थ्रू द इकोलॉजिकल एग्रीकल्चर एंड इनहेंस बिलो ग्राउंड एंड एबव ग्राउंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन एग्रो इकोसिस्टम this is a big question people are asking and mainstream agriculture is not accepting so we have tried to uh, find out certain uh, experimental evidence for this will the newly created novel ecosystems prove to be climate resilient and can, can sustain ecosystem functioning and green economy this is uh, last question we attended in this uh, which i am going to give in this presentation Uh, well there are a lot of evidences there that uh, developmental proceed rather developmental pathways and increasing human population require more land and land is getting converted into agriculture uh, into say urban uh, settlements uh, into uh, uh, agriculture urban settlements and other kinds of industrial settlements so it is decreasing forest cover is decreasing this is a figure for south asia recent figure we have not achieved what is required and we require restoration but uh, uh, the restoration several kinds of desertification and land degradations are going on this is government data uh, obtained through isro and then uh, degradation in both uh, semi arid arid subtropical you can just see here i will not go in detail but uh, this is some uh, around 7 8 year different data and only thing i just want to underline that we have not achieved much in restoration as yet the data says that it is very very meager what have been achieved next please i think this is not working you can just do it there next yeah so ecosystem restoration has several challenges and it provides so many opportunities also this is one of our paper uh, which have been published recently it talks about indian context next we have many schemes you can see there are national ecological policy there are national socio economic policy and many input ecosystem restoration input and biodiversity conservation can be given and there can be uh, social mobilization capacity building cost effectiveness innovation climate mitigation and adaptation can be achieved biodiversity conservation can be achieved ecological services and economic gains can be achieved local livelihood food security and human being uh, well uh, can be uh, achieved uh doubling or maybe increase in income farmers can be achieved guaranteed rural job policy these are various government policies which are there uh, ecological policies are there but and all these things theoretically it has been accepted globally that all these things can be achieved but we are not achieving what are bottlenecks why we are not able to achieve it those things has to be discussed next please so uh restoring degraded why to design a novel ecosystem restoring degraded ecosystems may not be possible as we don't know about the past below ground work this this part uh, i discussed so many beneficial economic and high value plant annual combinations can be designed and arranged with various layout and scattering designs for multiple economic and ecological benefits in different kind of agro climatic conditions even barren or last agro climatic conditions based on the uh, principles of green economy and ecological sustainability we can design it that i have demonstrated if you through our experiment similarly uh, soil has a different ecosystem of micro uh, organisms and a lot of beneficial micro organisms are there which can be redesigned and they can be either uh, say engineered in uh, root uh, the rhizospheric nick or can be regenerated if they are there 
or even endophyte co-evolved microorganisms can be uh, utilized and that way we can have a natural support system for growth of plants through microbial intervention and we have a natural support of animal habitats through plants, regeneration of plants. So once microbes will be regenerated or inoculated, then plants will come and plants will be, plant uh, ecosystem will be, will be uh, rather regenerated, then there will be a lot of habitat uh, generation and it will reduce man-animal conflict, it will reduce conflict of uh, say bio, uh, rather economic product and food product, it can decrease the conflict of uh, uh, say uh, tribals and governance system. So at least these three type of conflicts are there which are increasing which can also be managed through designing novel ecosystem. Next please. Uh, there are many benefits of the uh, novel ecosystems, designed ecosystem or created ecosystem. Uh, or restored ecosystems, whatever you want to say, uh, on the present situation. We can convert sources, carbon sources, on, uh, in carbon sinks. We can go for so many kind of aesthetic, cultural, economic, and ecological benefits out of these designs. Next, please. Many names are there in literature. This is not just I have proposed this name. Uh, synthetic ecosystem, novel ecosystem, constructed ecosystem, designed ecosystems, and biodiversity parks. All those are there. And uh, though I believe that uh, the ecosystem design was started when human settlement started in history, but written in, in modern science English literature, we have. Uh, this uh, 67, the first paper with these kind of designs. Next, please. There can be urban designs also, where urban ecosystem can be supplemented with plants and microbes. And in many countries, many ecological designs are now recommended and implemented for better urban climatic conditions and better urban air and water environment and soil environment. Next, please. Next. Yeah, this is there. There can be uh, design, designed ecosystem for very general purpose for several kind of ecological and economic benefit. And simultaneously, there can be designs for specific work. A lot of ecosystem designs has been done for bioremediation, detoxification of water and air. So this is one. Uh, for bioremediation, for removal of toxic substances from water, it is more more cheaper, and that's why, uh, and and more aesthetic. So uh, this technology is used for land uh, decontamination. Also, this technology is used. Next, please. Yeah, this is also certain parks which has been established for removal of toxic substances from degraded water. Next, and here you can just see in this. Uh, uh, picture uh, in, in uh, insect that uh, microbes and plants both are working together for uh, bioremediation purpose. Next, please. Well, uh, you can find forest. We have whatever forest is documented, and the data is not very rosy, but even whatever is there is not very, very properly forest. There are a lot of monocultures which are counted in forest and these are commercially exploited that's why a lot of degradation are already going in and monoculture have many natural calamities also one disease come and destroy all the uh, plants so whatever i the point i want to make that whatever uh, forest cover we are having is not very very adequate forest cover it, it can also be required to be redesigned because when you talk about plants plantation or uh, putting plants, uh, two things come. One, where will be land? So land is, I just want to underline that land is there within those areas where plants are there. Even forests, a lot of degraded forests are there where redesigning are required. Next. And we, here, these in urban areas, we have 
uh, some examples in India also. In Delhi, Delhi University and uh, DDA uh, have created some seven, eight biodiversity parks around Delhi. So that is one uh, multi-purpose urban designs uh, for this. These are also a kind of designer ecosystems where Professor Babu has been instrumental and his group from Delhi University and then DDA who are associated with them. And this is basically DDA product. Uh, next, please. Well, then one thing comes in uh, this uh, conservation process restoration and conservation that we need to exploit a lot of uh, say herbal products or food products are all which are plants are required to be or even uh, microbes and animals are required to be consumed by human society in various ways so we have to exploit and we have to conserve so how both are possible so there is dilemma so we have proposed that probably designing novel ecosystem in keeping uh, in mind the requirement of the emerging society and emerging economy and agroclimatic conditions or aquaclimatic conditions, we can uh, resolve this uh, solution. We can provide a solution for conservation, exploitation dynamics. Next, please. A lot of riparian belt are there uh, in uh, less developed, uh, uh, the countries like India, where economy is not very sound, and many other countries, they have not developed these riparian areas, and these are lying vacant. And there can be a very uh, big, huge carbon uh, sink, which, which are now carbon source, can be converted into carbon sink. And situations which is left can be converted into situations like life. Next, please. And I will not go in detail, but there are so many listed economic services and ecological benefits ecosystem services if we shall be able to convert those, uh, say, barren areas or degraded areas into uh, green areas of a particular design. Next, please. Next. Another thing is uh, uh, we, ha we can develop uh, many degraded land are there, say riparian beds and hilly areas, which cannot be used for agriculture at present. We can create perennial cropping system, especially for bioenergy production in those areas, and it can help a lot in resolving our uh, requirement of bioenergy and biomass. And whatever is in biomass is always a carbon sink. And whatever is free, free uh, carbon is source and bound carbon is always a sink. Next, please. Yeah, these are, I think these kind of grasses can be everywhere and they can be, and amongst them, a lot of aromatic grasses, which can also be harvested for aroma production. So aroma can be obtained, biomass, gas, all these things can be, bioethanol can be obtained from these sources, which can be very easily grown in all kind of degraded areas. They are very robust, very climate resilient. Next, please. Then microbes. Uh, this is interesting to many who do not understand about microbiology uh, to know that uh, microbes, what, whatever we know, we know about million and million of billion and billion of microbes. And we know they are good and bad for us. But what we know is just 1%, it is expected to be 1% of the whatever exists. So 99% microbes are there, but we don't know about them because we cannot culture them. We can see in all kind of microbes, microscope only those microbes which can be cultured. We do not have, we do not know the requirement of microbes and that's why we have not evolved, we have not developed the culture media for them. That's why it is maximum. We don't know exactly, but it is counted as one to uh, say maximum 5% are known and rest up to 95% are not known. Microbes are not known. Uh, next, please. Well, there are many bottlenecks. I will not discuss about that. Why we don't know? Because we, we don't know about their, and then out of what, what is known, only few, say very small percentage is utilized 
so microbes i just want to uh, make a point that microbes beneficial my uh, so, uh, microbes soil microbes in agriculture and other microbes in many other area in health in production of certain substances uh, can be uh, can be find out can be uh, selected can be developed into technology and uh, they can be utilized for various purposes uh, next please in agriculture they can be utilized a, a, a big area is there rather a, a huge uh, say field is there where uh, microbes are utilized at plant growth promoting microbes so uh, then endophytes are there in they are uh, in evolve with plants or animals we have a lot of microbes in our gut which in body we have millions of microbes similarly plants has a big number of microbes which can be beneficial to them next 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 yeah they have all these uh, i i just want to move it because these these endophytes have been shown to be beneficial and i think uh, this is not uh, a very important for the audience just it they are beneficial and that's why understanding them and using them obtaining their benefit can be very useful next uh, many agricultural practices have been proved in mainstream agriculture uh, low external input agricultural practices increase in soil carbon pool maintaining soil moisture to optimum by drip irrigation or mulching conservation agricultural practices organic agriculture zero budget farming rhizo engineering of microbial bio inoculants so all these uh, practices can regenerate can help regeneration of uh, endogenous endemic microbe which are otherwise getting lost because of agrochemicals pesticides and other chemicals which are very extensively used in agriculture they are very toxic to all animal consumers because only plants can use them or pesticides and other these chemicals are used for uh, destroying it so uh, they if that will be stopped with changing in agricultural practices we can regenerate also a lot of endemic microbes next please so uh, for indian green revolution i will not go in detail but there are so many advantages which are claimed but more than uh, that uh, i think there are economic gains or it is said that uh, at a time when there was hunger it uh, fulfilled the requirement of cereals but then it has created now a lot of problems in environmental and uh, health related issues and it is not considered sustainable so at present i think uh, alternative uh, methods are required everybody thinks that there should be alternative methods what alternative method we have to evolve there may be some controversy or some say differences on that but we cannot go to the uh, lo go longer with present agricultural production system this is sure uh, and we have to go for certain kinds of changes next pesticide use huge pesticide use is there next uh next we have recently reported this is a very high impact journal in science environmental science we have recently reported from lucknow that the, from market we buy vegetables and uh, it goes directly to our kitchen and cook has very very severe uh, carcinogenic elements and uh, uh, it it has a lot of associated health risk assessment has been done so next please see in ems also it was concluded at a time recently some one two years there was uh, the news that many diseases are there which are because of these elements toxic substances of agrochemical origin or industrial origin and they are related to many known and unknown diseases next please uh, pesticide is there pesticide contamination and related diseases and related toxicity everyone knows next so uh, we have poison in our food bowl which we don't know which is not uh, visible 
अनएसिमिलेटेड नाइट्रेट नाइट्राइट अमोनियम एंड फॉस्फेट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर और बी मैनी पीपल थिंक दैट ओनली पेस्टिसाइड्स आर टॉक्सिक बट इन फर्टिलाइजर फर्टिलाइजर इज फूड केमिकल फर्टिलाइजर इज फूड फॉर प्लांट्स ओनली प्लांट कैन एसिमिलेट इट एंड कैन कन्वर्ट इट इन टू ऑर्गेनिक फूड रेस्ट एनी इंसेक्ट एनी एनी फ्लाई एनी ह्यूमन बींग एनिमल इट इज टॉक्सिक नॉन ऑफ द ह्यूमन सी एनिमल किंगडम ऑर्गेनिजम इज देयर विच कैन एसिमिलेट दिस दिस इन ऑर्गेनिक न्यूट्रिएंट्स विच वी पुट इन टू आवर फील्ड टू ग्रो क्रॉप्स सो दीज आर टॉक्सिक एंड ए लॉट वॉट एवर वी पुट से ओनली थर्टी टू फोर्टी परसेंट आर यूटिलाइज बाई प्लांट्स रेस्ट आइदर गो इन एयर एंड काज क्लाइमेट चेंज दिस इज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग some goes in water and cause water pollution some goes remain unassimilated in food system in leaves in all uh, food parts and they are very toxic to consumer human consumer are as per consumer then heavy metals from pesticides weedicides and contaminated irrigation water origin are from industrial origin toxic toxins of microbial origin pathogens causes toxins produce toxins then arsenic of geological origin through ground water irrigation india is one very very suffering country from arsenic uh, ground water uh, arsenic of geological origin and then uh, whatever drinks we take cold drink milk uh, fruit drinks all they have contaminated toxic substances next please so organic principles are going to contribute in valuable framework of food system for food security there are so many kind of not only zero budget farming or say whatever we say organic farming but there are hundred of types of organic uh, say cultivation systems they are only thing uh, it is to be understood that uh, it is uh, it, in, it 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 uh, does not compromise for uh, quantity for longer but uh, uh, certainly in just first and second round there can be some some low productivity which will slowly build up uh, here uh, from the focus the in in principle the focus on increased productivity alone has to be converted into holistic integration of natural resource management with food and nutritional security this is very important to understand that uh, we agricultural scientists largely talks about production per unit area this is not sustainable earth bearing capacity is not like that so we have to go for a sustainable system where a holistic approach is required where productivity is one nutritional variation nutritional compositions maintaining nutritional composition biodiversity and organic pool all those things are required to be taken care and then ecosystem functioning most important is ecosystem functioning the if agroecology will not be your capacity to ecosystem functioning then nothing will work if insects will be killed then fertility will get low so all those the organic system talks about a holistic approach that is required to be thought of next please uh, this is just very briefly i will sub five uh, five minutes i will talk about some of our own evidences Uh, this is uh, uh, there is one controversy when we talk about microbial use use of microbes it is uh, told uh, that in zero budget farming also it is advocated that only native microbes can work means you can take their propagate there and put there you, you should not bring it uh, from outside i just uh, i from very beginning of this lecture i want to emphasize that it is not possible to depend on native system. because that is not original rather what was there it has been lost we don't have much diversity now so diversity from other places beneficial diversity can also be taken out and introduced and it can be beneficial this i just want to demonstrate native and out uh, exogenous both can be beneficial very quickly i will demonstrate it uh, next please this is from uh, ralegarh siddhi uh, you can see thoda piche jaiye Uh, the rock this is from rock i i just want to say rocks are considered dry rocks are considered to be low diversity pockets from there 
we have taken why we took it from there our samples because we have been looking for climate resilient microbe which if they can be beneficial they can be used for this uh, climate uh, do, climate time this climate change time so we wanted to be resilient formulations for, uh, which can be climate uh, suitable and can be work uh, working in harsh uh, climatic conditions and it, it is true next please yeah here uh, that rock has several uh, evidences uh, i will not discuss but the, it it gave certain evidences which indicate that there can be certain uh, there can be home for organisms next please and we just went for a genetic analysis metagenomic is name of this analysis and there we found 256 microbes habitating in the those rock 256 big number then uh, they are of two group only that we detected for fungal genera and bacterial genera two group of microbe and then because they were considered beneficial for uh, agricultural productivity next please and then we studied uh, some some uh, we we gathered some evidences that they can they could have put there in those rocks next please and we cultured about 21 microbes 10 bacteria and 11 fungal strains which who had uh, many beneficial uh, properties for plant growth means they can be used for as fertilizer this was our our rather amendments for uh, cultivation of uh, plants food plants or any kind of plants and that was our objective so we found at least 21 formulations out of that rock is small rock next uh well they had these microbes were got identified and they had salinity tolerance rot tolerance temperature tolerance and pesticide tolerance this is basically we were looking for having these kind of properties which can be more resilient and more beneficial next and then we tested it in wheat in lucknow and we found that uh, next uh, we made some formulation out of that next yeah tested in bigger fields next and here you can see that our formulation based on these microbes only proved better than chemical pre- chemical uh, npk and uh, this urea dap which is in practice only microbes grain yield and strain both were found no next please then we tried to increase diversity of above ground crops and here we used the same microbes here we used lycorice muleti and stevia and chili three crops uh, we also used one more one two more crop but during those year the water uh, the rain problem was there high rain was there in our area and they could not survive but at least these three crops were survived well next Uh, we got good productivity out of that next i i will just go very quickly please next move next uh, uh carbon sequestration above ground and uh, below ground were assessed and they were found very positive very incre- in increasing next then uh, they are component which is which is commercial component in muleti that is glycorrhizic acid content which has market value its uh, level was uh, also related to its biomass production and next then we tried with certain aromatic grasses which are very of quite high value and can be grown anywhere and here we used some endogen uh, some microbes microbial combination isolated from their own root next here also we found all the positive uh, say uh, in in three harvest we found that uh, their productivity increased very high next and soil microbial biomass carbon soil sequestration uh, carbon sequestration was quite high next their uh, these components species richness if Uh, species richness of microbes and species richness of above ground uh, these uh, say uh, 
plant were increased when carbon sequestration went high. Next, and economic uh, gains, both agronomical and economic gains were there. Both ecosystem gains and economic gains were there with increasing diver uh, diversity. Next, uh, their component, marketable component, commercial component were also same. It was not changed. This is very important to ascertain its quality. Next, next. So it was published in another uh, good journal. They are publishing in good journal. Prove that whatever you you want to say is on uh, sound scientific ground, and world can accept it. Next, so other also published in some good journal. Next, we tested one formulation for uh, say biocontrol of uh, hunger disease in tomato. It was also found good. Next, next. So. Uh, now i just want to conclude that uh, ecological restoration requires reimagination recreation and reestablishment of novel ecosystems for sustainable agriculture afforestation land and water decontamination reducing man animal conflict conflict of producing food crops commercial crops and energy crops etc from the fertile agriculture land and conflict of tribals with government system so we can regenerate economically and ecologically useful below ground and above ground ecosystems in the wasteland or low on low expenditure which will convert carbon sources into carbon sink and it will give us economic enormous economic and ecological benefit so these are certain of our co-workers who have been associated with this work Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, sir, for your value-added talk on sustainable agriculture. Uh, yeah. uh, friends, you will agree that you have a very good, uh, brilliant presentation here. If you have any question, the floor is open for any observation, any question from the Students? No. Thank you. Okay. Then let us close. I mean, please. May I thank now uh, Professor Rana Pratap Singh, who has uh, given a very elaborated presentation about the ecosystem and how sustainable eco can be maintained on behalf of the academy and on behalf of the organizers. So we thank you, sir for giving us this opportunity to learn from your deliberations. Thank you very much. Now, may I request uh, um, uh, Brigadier P. Ganeshan to honor our um, uh, Professor Rana Pratap. Now we are uh, going for the next session after tea break. So we'll, we are breaking for tea and we'll be reassembling here after 15 minutes. This session will be completely for the younger generations, the young students and others will be presenting here. And uh, uh, Professor Rana Pratap Singh will be chairing that session. So you all are invited to come and whatever you want to say, you can say that is your floor. After tea break. Thank you.
Welcome back. 
students and our valued delegates. Today we have a very interesting session now. Uh, we have a young lady, Kirtana S. Kumar. She is pursuing her BA from Delhi University. Uh, she is an undergraduate BA philosophy. Uh, and uh, she is uh, going to uh, present a topic, a very interesting topic, I would rather say, disability vis-a-vis -vis queer ecology. So I welcome Kirtana S. Kumar. You can take over the audience. Friends, you know that this session will be chaired by uh, Professor Rana Pratap Singh. And I'm expecting that uh, others' name will also come from the uh, audience. After uh, Kirtina, you will have another one, Ghosh, if she is here. No. If she is here, she will be after that. Otherwise, the other person may join. Students, we request you to kindly participate in the session. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I am Keetana Eskumar, a third year undergraduate at Delhi University. So today I'm presenting my paper. Uh, you can move to the next. So today I'm moving, uh, presenting my paper on disability vis-a-vis -vis queer ecology. That is disability in relation to queer ecology. So uh, basically, let's start with the topic first. What the topic says. So basically, my paper that is disability in relation to queer ecology says uh, most of the concerns about the present day speciesism and the separating of separation of the queerness within the ecology uh, with respect to with respect to some of the concepts that i've uh, taken from a very famous philosopher that is john paul sartre to you know just to understand what the problem is and how can we create a solution for it so uh, moving on uh, also please note that the queerness that i'm saying here suggest two sorts of queerness the first is disability and a second is homosexuality. But uh, the queerness rather I would say is about saying a lot about the uh, all kinds of queerness that exist in the society, not only homosexuality and disability. So the presentation here will be uh, divided in three parts. The first is the introduction to the problem. Second is the conceptual analysis and third is the conclusion. Next slide. Yeah, next. So this is a famous quote from Timothy Morton's book, The Ecological Thought. Uh, I would recommend you all to give it a read. So basically, uh, it says, saying humans are animals could get you in trouble. So could saying humans are not animal for different reasons. The word animal shows how humans develop intolerance to strangeness and to the stranger. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, basically now in order to understand what the current situation is and in order to re understand the relevance of this issue, we'll be looking at the current problems that it exist, that exist with the, uh, you know, the current existing systems. So firstly, I have three explanations for it. First is the visible difference, second is origin and the third one is uh, the survival instincts. So the first one that is visible differences. Visible differences are the general grounds upon which we divide our species. So let's ask ourselves, right? So what difference do we see between uh, us and our pets apart from physical appearance? So one would say that we are animal, but rather a, a rational one. But the other beings, they are also animal, but a non-rational one. So on this argument, we can say that the exceptionality to humans are their rationality. But we forget the basic similarity between us, that is the animal kind. So, uh, however, this happened and then we divided our ecology as per the values of the beings in terms of human requirement. So, then we divided uh, the species in terms of human requirement and neglected or eliminated the ones that aren't required as per our terms. 
and uh, so this is the problem that has been created at present and we ourselves proclaim as the rational ones but the you know we forget the basic dependency chain of nature and uh, yeah so to understand this situation further let us consider a situation of a medically unresponsive patient so for a medically unresponsive patient neither we can term uh, the person as irrational and nor as not human so where does where does this whole hierarchical uh, you know structure stands when it fails within its own originating uh, species so this set of biasness is thus completely unsustainable and uh, that is why we'll be moving ahead to the next question as to origin so basically here i'll be answering the question of where did uh, where did it all began so we ask right where did homosexuality come from where did like it all started so a general understanding of queerness is rigid with the ideas of modernism it is believed to be something that emerged with the disclosure of modern societies and high living standards nonetheless it isn't so uh, bonobos are considered one of the closest to human species and they copulate with even the same sex uh, some other animals include giraffe swans bottlenose uh, dolphins bison and even lions as some of the most common gay animals around us uh, so lions even copulate with each other to show loyalty within themselves even for that matter we know plants sorry uh, even for that matter we know plants they uh, produce seeds without fertilizing with either a part of their ovule or like their ovary so this uh, shows the irony that we do accept the queerness in the nature to a somewhat sustainable extent within the animal species we can say but it seems impossible for us to accept the same uh, queerness or homosexuality or disability when it comes to our own species so now getting back to the question of where did it all come from i think now for us uh, all of us i think we know that even asking the question of where did it all began with seems uh rather irrelevant because we know that uh this evolution has always been there queerness has always been around us and it will continue to evolve with time it is uh, been a result of adaptation to various obstacles to survive now uh, i'll be moving ahead to the third problem that is the survival instinct so self preservation self preservating instincts are the unconscious actions that our brain directs upon making decisions whenever we feel a threat to ourselves so uh, for instance let's take an example of a bug coming at you so whenever we see a bug coming at us we either wave it away or we close our eyes so this is also some kind of decision that our brain directs upon make uh, upon our brains to make that decision in order to protect us from the external threats so with modern changes this self preservating instincts further change with what we feel is crucial now so uh for example we look away on the uh, on the patients or the on the person or the person lying on the road uh because you know who wants to get into a stressful situation nowadays however it may seem as if we are only protecting ourselves from the threat but it has another outlook sometimes protecting ourselves also we put others in jeopardy so for someone who isn't visibly queer uh it is still considered normal by most of us although as soon as the same normal becomes visibly queer we refuse to accept them we consider them a threat to ourselves our society in some way or the other so the uh, hypocritical ones would say that we do you know acknowledge or we do accept them for their existence in the society but when they uh, are associated with themselves they disguise them so yeah the same is for any disabled child when one has a disabled child people tend towards aborting them rather than acknowledging the agency of the child justifying it as an act of relief for both the parent and the uh, and the child however i don't intend to put this allegation on every parent because i know there are other things to be kept in mind but rather on only those parents that do not acknowledge the agency of the child or do not acknowledge their existence just Uh, on the basis of protecting themselves yeah next slide 
so uh, this is the second part that is the conceptual analysis we'll be beginning with a bit of introduction to jean paul sartre so jean paul sartre was known to be the father of existentialism his work in being and nothingness nothingness published in 1943 uh, formed a direct interrelatedness between any being and its conscious state and he tries to maintain an ontological description throughout his book Sartre uses this conception of abstracting to build a more specific description of nothingness of the non-beings. So he maintained a a posturai inductive movement we can say throughout his works and that is where he differs from other philosophers like Kant because for him uh, existence precedes essence. What does existence precede essence means? So uh, we are just saying that you know the essence of our lives we can only derive those essence after we actually uh, you know exist so he rejects the a priori state of essence as one can simply not know the essence of one's own life without actually experiencing it so we need to exist to even to comprehend uh, the experiences and abstract the essence out of it so for sartre appearance is real and employing abstraction we can acquire the inside and outside of anything so for our context uh we may use the example of simply creating a deviation from a posturai point of view towards the different hierarchical orders to attain superiority we simply are neglecting the experience of our minds to explore the endless possibilities but the whole point of living comes into a question when we do not uh, acknowledge the ideas like disability or queerness so both these notions are something that just do not fit with the preordaining nature of the society thus for sartre existence has to be aesthetic because otherwise you're just preordaining the ends uh, without even experiencing it and that for him is something that is just false and completely wrong so next slide please yeah so the next is being in itself uh, for itself this is the main concepts that i have taken from jean paul sartre's being and nothingness to understand queerness and disability with respect to our own ecology uh, here he reformulates the same description of human consciousness in a predicament where the transcendent individual is disassociated with himself so we are known as the being for itself the conscious beings and the being in itself are the unconscious and the absolutes of the nature so uh, however we cannot be called complete without the in itself as it is what it means to apprehend ourselves and uh, as an object because we are always transcending the absolute terms of the being in itself with the means of for itself so the possibility of these two concepts unfolding each other is what is termed as nothingness the conscious freedom everything including our greed our love compassion sexuality ability etc unfolds from the reforming of the state Uh, of the relationship between the being in itself and the for itself nothingness is the defining relationship between the being uh, state that completes this being for itself so according to sartre humans being the conscious state uh, conscious beings have the ability to transcend into others and we derive our meaning only through looking up to our future in such a sense so now we may ask a question ourselves right like although we are conscious beings we possess qualities of being for itself and we also do possess some qualities of being in itself right so like uh, for example some part of our personality are constant for example the uh, color of our eye or the nationality so why do we need to assure a relationship with the external being in itself so even if an individual has a certain physical nature he still projects himself by identifying with meaning or taking meaning from his concrete characteristics and thus negating the identity the paradox is this and uh, as a being as the being for itself becomes aware of its existence it reestablishes a firm relationship between the inconstant being for itself and the constant being in itself so thus the the for itself desiring to become one with the being in itself imposes its sound judgment on the other judgment thus for sartre this reassure the uh, reassurance is what sartre has described as nothingness the conscious freedom 
Now, in order to understand the relation between the world and the being, let us consider the dilemma where there is no being in itself, just mere consciousness of the being for itself. So the ex experience that takes into consideration the being for itself comes from a series of changes in the being in itself. And if we are eliminating the factor of the being in itself, we might have to ask ourselves where is this consciousness coming from? Let's go. So this is the pro process of nothingness and in this same sense, uh, you know, if we eliminate the queerness of the ecology, we may, we may have to, uh, we may not be able to understand or attain the consciousness. Uh, the queerness of the ecology here can be understood as the being in itself, the constant and us as the being for itself, the conscious beings. Uh, and it is caused the nothingness that is the uh, conscious freedom, it is caused from a center of negation or a lived experiences of nothingness. And when we assure the experience with the essence of it, we are possibly connecting the already existing being in itself with the being for itself and without nothingness, freedom does not exist in consciousness. So this is the third and the final part, the conclusion part. So here we'll be talking about two, two things. That is, first is the relevance of this topic and second is the conclusion. So relevance, the mere existence of the disabled body and queerness comprises itself in the being for itself uh, as the other beings as we are. So however, the nature of this queerness, right? So the disability and the queerness comprises itself in the being for itself but uh, as we are conscious beings but this nature of the queerness comprises in the being in itself so eliminating the importance of one of both being in itself as well as the being for itself hampers the goal of our con conscious freedom the relation between the queerness in the nature and the being that constitute the queerness clearly simplifies the conception of being in itself and being for itself. This is what the current sen scenario manifests where we do not allow even the bare existence of uh, nature and its reconditioning. We are actually prohibiting them from attaining their uh, conscious uh, or we can say conscious freedom or actual essences. So how does it affect humans? Well, when we restrain a part of our consciousness, we are falsifying the essence of ourselves. And with the other being for itself, uh, also we are hampering their conscious, conscious freedoms as well. So finally, this is going to lead into a path of disassociation with even ourselves. So we may continue, if we may continue to this path, we may continue to even disassociate, it, disassociate ourselves with even our uh, conscious state but it may only end up in restlessness and chaos that is currently happening. Okay. Finally, the conclusion. So the proper exertion of Satre's conception of being in itself, for itself, hold relevance today since its non-existence is seen within beings. Only the understanding of ourselves is the way to acknowledging the existence of other beings in the ecology, be it disabled or queer. Statistics suggest about 20% of the pregnancies are aborted, but among them, about 90% of the babies are con uh, suffer with congenital disorders and are aborted, as are 92% of the babies with Down syndrome. The current scenario is that we are unaware of the understanding of ourselves and tend to discriminate uh, against the queer as unworthy of living, which is ultimately, uh, ultimately leading or resulting into separation or abortion among species. Allowing the abortion of uh, disabled children also emphasizes that the, any disabled children, any disabled child is less than any human child. So consideration of the disabled person or a gender queer is important, not because they may become a great asset for the society later, or will be able to give, give back to the society one day, but because they have their own individual essences or agencies and they must be allowed
to bloom into whatever they they may wish to and experience life to finally form their own individual essences as satre says so satre's ideas of being and nothingness deploys the understanding of life with the being and the world ultimately leading to conscious freedom of every being out there and what better way exists to live without freedom thank you thanks kirtana i think kirtana has made a wonderful presentation and brought us to the uh, point where we have been missing uh, very uh, brilliant concepts and the uh, taking from paul satre and then bringing it to us and how nothingness and being queerness how it is uh, affecting and making the society different that she has made the point now the floor is open uh, if anyone have anything to discuss with her interact no yes 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 that is open please just i am coming with mic um chitna uh, i begin with my personal and sincere apologies for missing substantial part of your paper i joined late here because i ran into some other administrative issues of the committee uh, i chair uh, dr divakar has rightly said that uh, i mean i have been associated with the academy but uh, i i think i tried to fill this void uh, and you all allowed by giving me full space in the academy uh, but as an academic discourse uh, i mean i could never dare to do so uh, uh, i think well, heads on to you really um my <clears throat> suggestion would be uh, in case you are aware fine otherwise um john hunt's work on disability uh does question therefore a lot of the mistaken definitions of disability which ultimately rely upon the utility model uh so that uh is written with a perspective uh which is in line with uh paul sunshatre but at the same time uh, goes beyond it with a lot of critical insights from the lives of those persons with disabilities um uh, you know who may not be fitting otherwise all the utilitarian definitions you know because most of the definitions in the disability studies uh, until quite recently have been centering on these claims that everybody can do everything so don't discriminate us um so i think uh, there is a lot of scope that is provided by you know that kind of an intervention and i hope that uh, we will learn more uh, from you if you could follow it up and it's important also because otherwise uh, the discourse until quite recently also centered around the rolshin theory of social justice in fact uh, this is something that as you might be aware uh, particularly amartya sen in his 1980s early writings on capability approach try to um you know brought in and uh, the point that i think then uh, also need further exploration i mean yet another point that need further exploration and i can say it based on what i heard from your conclusion is that uh, even that uh, even that existence solely for the self even the existence solely for the self is social after all that self is part of the social and why i am saying it because otherwise there is since your paper is theoretical so i am also speaking in that language yeah so others please don't mind uh, and therefore i mean making this point that even this self is social is important because otherwise the the danger academic dilemma that we may be face to face with 
uh, is, I mean, it lies in the postmodernist reduction. Postmodernist reduction of the structure into you know isolated uh, individuals, fragments, etc., etc. So even these fragments are part of the society. They are also produced by the society. They are part of the society, and society cannot exist without them. You know. And the last thing that I want to say is that um, the 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 temporary nature of the ability abled body. Uh, relying on Anita Gai and others, yeah. The fact that all human bodies, for instance, are temporarily abled, yeah. I think uh, that is something that you could still incorporate uh, in your conclusions whenever we will have your uh, paper for publication available. And really, I'm glad, and I'm also very happy. For that's my last uh, observation at this moment. Uh, a lot of scholars from different universities keep sharing their researches with me for feedback. One of the problems that I find with most of these researches are that they are not well informed of the intellectual, philosophical trajectories, the way you have tried to uh, do it, and that too, you know, I mean, not when you have become old chronologically, right? So congratulations once again for that. I hope you will I mean, consider some of these suggestions and we'll be benefited with your interventions in the days to come. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, sir. I, am, I really appreciate for your suggestions. So uh, the codependency that you're saying that uh, it is social, I agree with that point. And I think the, the concept that we have made as if the disability uh, or the disabled bodies are in uh, themselves complete and can do whatever they ha they can is not true. Uh, I agree on that point and I have also tried to depict it but because this is a shorter version of my paper, I, I think I have missed the point. So basically I believe the same but I think the uh, even if they are not complete and if even if they uh, seem to be incomplete in terms of the capitalistic or the utilitarian, utilitarian uh, point of view, I think the the codependency between any humans and a disabled person is same as that we have with the nature. Sorry, sir, I can't I can't hear you. That's true for human nature relationship, and that's true for all human relations. Yeah. That's true for all human relations. And in fact, I mean, when we say, as uh, me and Dr. Chaube were just talking, I mean, in a passing manner in some other context, interdependency, there's also this whole idea of, um, uh, uh, what is this called? Um, I forgot. Uh, uh, not just interdependency, there's also the idea of this illusion that there, is, there, there could be a perfect being. There is no perfect being anywhere in, in the world. And in fact, uh, um, I am, in fact, I forgot to mention at that point of time, I am also happy with the fact that you, you continuously use the term disabled. Really, this is, uh, this is something that most of these scholars, generally they are afraid of. You know, they are happy with using terms like persons with disabilities as if there are other persons who are with it, without disabilities. And now, and then handicap and what the, and 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 now I mean we are swept away with the young, yeah. I mean with the young, I think any scientific approach, particularly in social science congress, would need to engage with this whole idea of the young. I mean I'm sure Dr. Devakar's ungs or Dr. Chaube's ungs, my ungs, are as divine if at all, if at all, <laughs> they are not divine for me, but if at all, as mine, yeah. If my uh, blood circulation nerve, the motor nerves are not functional. They are as divine as the functional nerves of all the other people present in this house. Yeah. So, very glad. I mean, people come and they say, when I write, they say, that why do you use the term disabled? It sounds so derogatory, but they do not know the meaning of the term disabled. Yeah. I mean, the term disabled does not reflect on the body, which is disabled. 
it reflects on the environment which has disabled them. Huh? I mean, you know that, you know, others need yeah. to think about it. If I can't come here alone, then it is because of the built infrastructure that those who consider themselves as able have constructed. Huh? If it was asked me how to construct it, I would have given you a design wherein I could have traveled and you could have traveled without any extra support requirements. Yeah. So anyhow, I mean, yeah, I will not take more time on that. You can always interact. I'm here. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Fantastic presentation, Kirtana. Um, also, this topic that you brought in, it's, uh, it's good that we could do this uh, in uh, this kind of a conference, a social science conference, which has you know, not been uh, very uh, very much into gender studies, exactly, to say so. Mm. And uh, I was thinking, actually, um, just one point uh, about your uh, title, or the whole uh, concept that you are... Uh, relating uh, in, uh, in which you are trying to relate um, or uh, this uh, disability uh, children with a disability and um, children children with the gender uh, gender gender, 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 gender. Yeah. so um, to talk about um, the issues of um, disability um, or the uh, disabled children or uh, to talk about the queer um, issue we could really talk uh, talk about it in di uh, different ways. I mean, uh, not by comparing. Also, mm? yeah. we could do that. Uh, what ha what made you to uh, make it like this way? Uh, just uh, any comment upon that. And also, um, just to add with the, um, uh, what Dr. Gupta was talking about the, about the terminology that uh, we are using, like disabled. Uh, recently, maybe you you might have noticed that. Um, we are using uh, persons with uh, di differently abled, like yeah. that term we are using. Uh, there are di there can be different discussions on uh, these terms also. But why you were choosing that term, uh, um, or was it a conscious choice to use uh, instead of differently able to use uh, a disabled like that? So that's all. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the question. So the first thing as that you asked what made me apply it with the concepts of a philosophy uh, philosopher. So basically, uh, I am an undergraduate student, so I do have a lot of reading. So when I was actually uh, doing my readings, I learned the concepts of being in itself and for itself. So this idea of disability and gender queer has always been in my mind, and the ideas of capitalism does not fit with them. So it's always it it has always been a burden on the capitalistic world to even have a gender queer or a you know a disabled in particular. So this is what I was aiming for a, a long time that to contribute something as uh, to the community and uh, in terms of you know specifically speaking in terms of gender queer and disabled persons. So when I was reading this, I uh, I don't know what clicked in my mind but I instantly got a connection between being in itself and the for itself so in itself are the constant in the nature for anybody who does not know uh, constants uh, uh, what I mean by constant is the nature that keeps on changing and it's their constant nature to be absolute and we are the conscious beings the only conscious beings so Satre says that there is a there is a con uh, you know there's a relation between these two and when we affirm this relationship we actually gain a conscious freedom that is you know the state of nothingness that he terms as but this term as you know nothingness i thought of it as a place where we can you know a better place to live just in my definition it's a better place to live where we you know reaffirm a relation between disabled gender queer and every sorts of queerness i'm speaking in the nature with humans because uh, as far as humans are concerned, we have created a superiority, I would say. I don't think everybody would uh, accept it, but I think it is so because of our rationality. But if we uh, see, there is there is this uniqueness in every beings. So, so, for example, the animals are also unique in their own manner. Dogs can, uh, you know, sense earthquakes. We can have our rationality. So, we have termed rationality in terms of our definition. 
and this has what i think let uh, you know made this hierarchical structure where we are at the top but the question is how are we terming us at the top when we are not even acknowledging that nature is codependent you know this is what my main inspiration was so that is why i connected it with john paul sartre and also the term that you asked the disabled term yeah i know that uh, people use terms as uh, differently abled specially abled so i did not use a term because i think they are disabled and we are all disabled as uh, sir said and i acknowledge the fact that yes we are all disabled but the thing is that we are not visibly disabled okay so if someone has uh, a mental issue or a mental disorder we won't say that the person is visibly queer until and unless he does something strange in front of us right so for us that person is actually perfectly normal but when the same person becomes uh, thoda sa violent or we can say strange in between the community we say acha this person is disabled so let's just you know divide that person so this is what uh, the i would say the utilitarian view has done and so for that matter i took disabled because i felt disabled is the only word that actually states them correctly and not specially able because they are not specially able they are able but yeah they are also disabled as we are we are not visibly they are visibly so that's it thank you yeah i mean there is enough data that suggests that the capitalist mode of development has increased have hazards many fold and this result this is resulting every year in the growth of persons with disabilities exponentially everywhere so i mean uh, because uh, this question was posed to you you of course didn't answer that i'm letting you know capitalism you know i mean has increased despite all improvements in medical science okay the number of people with disability is increasing because of all these so called developmental activities and the modern warfare and of course the extreme example is the nagashi uh, that hiroshi and nagasaki but even all other things think of this uh, gopal uh, bhopal that gas yes, tragedy and think of so many others and even on a daily basis when you're traveling on the road how many road accidents happen on a daily basis so you know the i mean that is why globally i mean um, now the uh, this uh, uh, figure is uh, being compiled and it is said now that more than 15% of our population is suffering with one or other kind of disability in fact this number used to be 10% in 2000 uh, and now this has gone by 2012 2013 uh, this number has gone up to 15% and now i think the estimates are being reworked again so the number is going up such a major section of our humanity is disabled so capitalism has a direct relationship with disability it has increased this manifold although it pretends as if this is resolving the problem yeah through polio vaccination for instance but on the other hand it is causing much more than what it is curing every year yes sir so factual i, I mean thing that you can explore anywhere on the internet yes i agree sir just because uh, you know you and as dr vikas actually highlighted the whole relationship between capitalism and disability and uh, you know you mentioned the whole understanding of normal uh, as a historian of the colonial period uh, i'm reminded of how you know those uh, uh, mad houses came into existence and psychiatry as a discipline evolved to define what is normal and to dispossess many of the seemingly abled but in the name of mental health which is visibly not disabled and uh, yes it is in the era of colonialism accompanied and followed by imperialism which in the case of 20th century capitalism and 21st century where bodies humans are reduced to just means to an end and not end in itself and that is what is leading to this crisis 
so this was just a reflection on your discussion. But uh, I have a very, uh, you know, mm, question which I have been in dilemma for a long time for several reasons. That uh, it is also rooted in the nature of uh, education required. And that again is a product of the capitalist system, I must say. That uh, on the one hand, the idea is to give them, uh, you know, uh, a different kind of schooling where like-minded or similarly disabled students can study because they need special education. At the same time, there is this other argument that they must study along with, you know, as uh, normal kids and uh, they might grow better. But uh, one of the problems that I see and uh, from my experience in the family is that uh, even if children with disability can accommodate well and do well in the classroom as, you know, abled people as we call, the discrimination comes from the teachers. Mm -hmm. Where there is grace marking, where there is, you know, just saying, Achha, ye to kar lo, isko marks de do, pass kar do. And not letting that uh, student grow to one's full potential, as you were mentioning. And uh, the flaw is in the system itself, which is forcing individuals to live in categories, you know, queer, disabled, what kind of disability, what percentage of disability. And that quantification of essence of human being is, the, is at root of, uh, you know, isolating individuals and necessitating dependence on others, a conscious uh, recognition of that. So if you could uh, just uh, solve my dilemma a little bit, thanks. Uh, thank you for the question. I think it's a very big dilemma to solve, but uh, the nature of the education that you are saying, which is required, I think it's a non-conventional education that is required now, because the conventional system does not actually fit with our uh, existence because uh, you know as per my view implying such disciplines as philosophy or humanities even more deeply will inculcate some uh, knowledge about the uh, you know the nature and how it is how we are actually supposed to be not in a capitalistic manner and also uh, when you mentioned i also remembered a uh, uh, instance my friend is a gender queer, and when we were in our schools, she was not allowed to wear the boys' uniform. So uh, it was basically the uniforms that we have in school, they are for boys and girls. So there is no middle terms or the middle grounds that anyone else can have. So these are also issues, but I think the uh, education system that you're talking about, it's a very big dilemma, and I think a lot has to change for uh, inculcating it into the children, especially, uh, you know, implying some humanitarian courses, like one of them is philosophy. I think it's going to give a big change. Yeah, so apart from that, it's a very big dilemma to solve. And I'll and think about it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kirtina, you have uh, generated a very uh, sound academic discourse which we were missing and uh, thanks uh, because for uh, giving them a, a stronger base by linking this with the development space and we see that uh, when we are linking the visible disability the invisible disability and their determinants are even more alarming and harmful for example, if you take one uh, global hunger index in which we have taken the nutritional intake through which we are looking into as how mother takes uh, food when she is pregnant, how children are born and then how they are malnourished. And the medical science suggests us that the first two years are the basic period where if they are fully properly nourished, they can grow in their full strength. And we have the, uh, the developing society all over the world. We have the voluminous large chunk of malnourished children. Think of their proper development mentally, physically, and otherwise. 
So it is basically the question of distribution and development discourse that you have brought it very carefully and uh, uh, it has come from the audience as well. Thank you so much for being with us for this uh, brilliant uh, presentation, Kirtana. Now may I request our chairperson to honor her. The another person listed in our uh, is Manushri Ghosh. Is she there? No. If she is not there, to then uh, we have a privilege to have uh, uh, Dr. Harsha Merchant with us. May I request her to make her presentation? Sir, that is someone who is the doctor. If somebody from the young minds are coming, I don't say that Harsha is not young, but I am. <laughs> If uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Isa, for giving me this chance. Thank you, youngsters. I don't know why you are not coming. We have. We have presented so many papers at so many seminars. When we are giving you a chance, you should readily grab it. No problem. Thank you. Uh, I, will, I will have my presentation, which has already been presented somewhere, and my students have also presented, that I have just now clubbed it together in a manner that it will give you the idea how the energy field of our festivals will increase our mental and physical health and with good environment. How that makes our environment very pleasant, very nice. Let us see one by one the slides will go at a stand so that uh, I will finish it so that your lunch time will not be uh, delayed. Thank you. Can we start? Okay. Food for the body food for the brain, and how to build. This one is the, we are teaching as a knowledge pyramid. How this knowledge pyramid is built. And for that, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. See, look at that part of wisdom. That part is showing the lesser space, whereas the data is having a very long base. Data is like we collect the sand or mitti. I don't know what you say it. Uh, we collect all kinds of sand. That is enough, more than enough. But the porter then afterward uh, collecting the information converts into knowledge. I don't have, suppose if then knowledge, then that mitti will be mitti only. It will not be converted into knowledge. But that knowledge should be transformed into wisdom. And this transformation needs our education to be in a way so that all the data, whatever it may be with us, should be transformed to the wisdom level. Now, uh, how to build that is another matter. All of you know we'll go to the another slide. Yes, for, good, you, for being a good human being, we should have social awareness, impart knowledge, and teacher is the person. I, I mean, teacher is not that teacher, but your parents, your uh, elders, your peer group, your uh, even uh, your uh, kings, all are teachers in a way. And formal or informal sector, they are the teachers that build our uh, psyche and develop, and they have very great role in developing our personality, to sustain ourselves in such a way to that wisdom level where our energy will be used or channelized in a way to make 
a very good sustainable environment healthy environment uh, you can any time uh, ask me question if you are not uh, familiar with or if you find something is missing next yes these are our uh, how we build the design innovate that is masters level what we are doing bachelors level and grade 8 to 12 this is okay these are for my students we have done this uh, exercise next is role of teacher in students life now again teacher means not that teacher only but at home parents and elders only make a student a better human build physical mental and moral strength bring out the best in students prepare them for taking up modern day challenges and resolve them inspire them to strive for greatness impart knowledge evaluate impartially shape students future by making him aware about our culture and tradition ingrain ethics and values these are not these should not remain simply words it should be implemented it should be implemented in a better way with having that wisdom in your mind next okay these are regarding science stories and all that because here all are not from science stream so i will skip <laughs> this also i will skip because it is related to my science stream okay teachers of ug students undergraduate teach underlying principle behind scientific phenomena we generally do not teach them we say because we are celebrating because we are doing this way you have to do no give them scientific way and then they will learn faster build capacity to look look for information through resources like books internet discussion group group projects design experiments and build prototype make them independent learners use mocks course on swayam uh, iits and foreign university free or paid online courses build presentation skills just now you people are not coming out otherwise you people can come out with present skills presentation skill far 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 better than our at least mine i think so next this is okay next doctorate students here any phd scholar no no okay go ahead then essential skills for any teacher preparation micro and macro level planning of the course prepare and share your own course content effective communication punctuality presentation skill self and content be sensitive and empathetic with students peers no yes empathetic is much more properly we should have that empathy which we are generally losing it be empathetic Uh, knowledge updation long term career planning and be prepared to spare time and energy beyond the class hours i think you might have remembered your teachers who are always ready to guide you to mentor you to facilitate you they will not say okay my duty hours is over so now come tomorrow do you remember someone or you i am just speaking it out no you are not remembering any teacher there you are afraid of uh, talking to them your problem after say suppose your um, classroom is over by 5 o'clock and if you have some problem at 6 o'clock 7 o'clock 8 o'clock 9 o'clock is it possible for them to access her or no nahi no, sir aise mat bolo is it so not now on the contrary now because of technology it become very easy whatsapp and you will get the message i think so um, information will be yours i don't know not now and before also our teachers were very good and i think now also majority of them are good enough to talk to you but i don't know about you because you are not telling ki yes you, you can uh, have the communication with your teachers after duty hours 
or rather you people are not having time that might be also possible because you people are also very busy with your thing okay next is from good to great yes you might be very good person but now try for becoming great and there are so many rules that know your rules regulation service condition and all this will compel you to become good to great next teacher though boss in the class maintain strict yahan pe see what is strict discipline it is to self self discipline that is the strict discipline not that she will spare the then no next is develop eye contact with students students should feel free to speak in class even though i am trying ki you people can speak but i don't know i think you are customized ki no 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 inko bol lene do aap bhi apna pura karo aur hame canteen jaane do no speak it out no what you want to say here we are giving you chance to speak out then why you are keeping mum are you to you are told that no you should keep mum you are told <laughs> okay be ha uh, be punctual techno savvy and fluent uh, my students are much techno savvy than myself i always take their help in preparing all kind of presentation i have told so that remove my students name and uh, add only this because i have uh, com- combination of three four presentation of mine so to them i acknowledge that all my students are there take pride in your profession yes say i am a teacher i am a future builder never say oh i am a teacher no you are the teacher who made all the profession to come up if doctors are doctors because you were teacher if engineers are engineer because you were teacher so take pride in your profession go ahead okay 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 go ahead okay quick no no problem next no see because i was taking at that time uh, makar sankranti or pongal was there so what i want to connect ki all the festivals can be connected so that happy environment and these all festivals are environmental related it is not so okay environment is something different festivals are something different new education policy is different and teachers roles are different no all are well integrated to make the whole society better place to live in so uh, whether you sp- uh, speak mag bihu ya happy sankranti ya happy pongal uh, happy lori all are one in the same and this is our next is united india where sir next slide eh? okay next hmm next these are the significance of it yeah how environment is related in all these festivals next history is also given but i don't think you will listen to that next next no that uh, united india that won i uh, high yes here the unity in diversity the same festival is celebrated all over india but it has different name lori in north pongal in south makar sankranti in western part gujarat it is called uttarayan so all together it is the same festival it is the same spirit and with the environment beginning to change sun starts with the uttarayan we celebrate it like that all the festival whether you take holi or uh, diwali or whatever it may be next next our ha uh, huh. now the new education policy it has been started with so many major transformational reforms these transformation reforms are well correlated with all this health energy and environmental related issues how oh, let us see that these are the history of how it has been evaluated first university education commission was there then secondary education commission then education commission under dr uh, d s kothari then national policy of education then 42nd constituent amendment education in concurrent list then national policy of education 1986 
then national policy of education modified in 1992 program of action then psr subramaniam committee report 27th may 2016 and last and not the least but very important dr k kasturi ranganathan committee report on 31st may 2019 the new education policy report have come and now they have started implementing it what are the major things in that which can be related to our topic that is to say energy environment and health next yes yes next i think uh, i think you might be knowing that here holistic and multidisciplinary education have flexibility of the subject how that multiple entry and exits are possible now UG program three or four years, PG program one or two years, integrated five years bachelor's or master and MPhil to be discontinued. Credit transfer and academic bank of credits are there. Higher education institute research intensive, teaching intensive universities and autonomous degree granting college. These are new things yet to be implemented. but it is coming in the policies yet to be implemented uh, model multidisciplinary education and research university in or near every district that's what they have written in the policy i don't know but these are the reforms they have given in the policy next graded autonomy hai academic administrative and financial phasing out affiliation system in 15 years national mission of mentoring independent board of governor single regulator and online self disclosure based transparent system for approval in place of inspection common norms we have we'll go ahead because i don't think they know about uh, okay we'll go uh, ahead meanwhile i i just want to close here say thank you and i want to make one two three uh, there are four pillars of education that is learning to know learning to do learning to live with others and learning to be all the all these four pillars to be integrated in such a way that our main focal theme that is to say energy environment and health can be implemented what is learning to know learning to know is what we called as gyan yog the what generally we consider that as a degree whatever you are taking that is good one should have it but instead of that wisdom level we should go and that gnan yog yog means judna to connect so learning to know the next will be yes you have known learning to do karma yog whatever you have that wisdom or knowledge apply that into your daily life and with your professional life and you will say learning to know has transformed into learning to do learning to live with others now what do you mean by others i have come over here i don't find you others i i find the same thing as my lovely darling daughters because whenever i teach same my girls are there here also same i don't feel these people are really taking care of us and why we are coming in such conferences and uh, seminars and conducting this we come to know each other we come to know what are your problems and how you are solving it you will come to know what are our problems and how we are solving it all the major issues can be solved in a better way through dialogue through communication positive communication that's why learn, learning to uh, learning to know then learning to do what what was the third phase was learning to live with others third one and the fourth is learning to be if these three are maintained automatically one can be at the stage of learning to be that is at the wisdom level it though it will take time but curriculum is 10 to 15 times we know that yes with that phase of life we can go up to that level learning to be it is not said so k 
okay it is for someone else who can be there at that level and we cannot be yes we can be because from starting level we have started this kind of things so that we can attain that learning to be level now these four can be attained which these are the four pillars of the education but these four pillars of the education can be there with a women centered family women's child center education then knowledge centered society if we come across all these kind of things then principles then it is not difficult to reach at the point where we can find atmanirbhar bharat mera bharat mahan simply written writing mera bharat mahan ya mera desh mahan hum mahan nahi ho jate iske liye for that we have to put our efforts since childhood till adulthood that yes we are here and i think uh, i don't know people were telling at that time we were not having that uh, lock and key to our houses because no one was stealing anything no one, i think one day really this thing will be followed one can let us hope that this phase will also come where the vasudev kutumbakam the whole universe is my family can be achieved thank you very much for listening thank you thank you i think it could be interesting for everyone to hear the okay yeah fine can we can we have further some interaction with her she has presented her views on education other yes there is some hand Ah, yes, yes, yes. ठीक है माइक चल रहा है मैडम धूमिल लिखते हैं एक आदमी है रोटी बेलता है एक आदमी रोटी खाता है एक तीसरा आदमी भी है जो न रोटी बेलता है न रोटी खाता है मैं पूछता हूँ यह तीसरा आदमी कौन है मेरे देश की संसद मौन है आज शिक्षा का वही हाल है जो लोग शिक्षा से जुड़े हुए हैं जो स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं उनसे नहीं पूछा जाता है कि शिक्षा का क्या प्रारूप होना चाहिए और ये नई घटना नहीं है पिछले कई सालों से एक प्रक्रिया जो एक वैश्विक पूंजीवादी व्यवस्था से हम लोग जुड़े हुए हैं उसकी वजह से है तो उस परिवेश में आप यू you नो know, लगातार पॉलिसीज बदल रही हैं एंड सबसे ज्यादा प्रभाव शिक्षकों पे पड़ा है एवर सिंस आई हैव जॉइन टीचिंग मैम एवरी ईयर इट हैज बीन अ न्यू सिस्टम ऑफ एजुकेशन न्यू करिकुलम न्यू सिलेबाई आई एम डूइंग आई एम ट्राइंग टू एडजस्ट एंड आई थिंक सब जगह हो रहा होगा सो पॉलिसी इम्बाइबिंग you know having higher goals making education more relevant i understand the goals of the policy but uh, how do you uh, explain that uh, who all are involved and uh, what measures are being suggested to what end with the with respect to the frequently changing policy with respect to education thank you madam but this policy has not changed frequently this change policy has come to this level at this time where it was needed why because there were so many students due to technology they want to uh, have two three degrees at a time but they were not allowed to why because when you are doing this degree you cannot go for that but now this is because of multiple entry and exit process they can be allowed so it was very much needed another thing what you are telling ki yes those who are making policy they should have teachers or they should have professors with them so that it can be it can be planned in such a way where the need is there otherwise simply for the for the sake of changing it will of no use wo to fir a new bottle mein old wine dalo that, that should not be there yeah. it is not like that nowadays so many changes have been for example uh, i don't know how they will come across i i really don't know ki they are telling ki in uh, local language 
up to up to primary education should be in the local language now local language can be suppose in mumbai there are five to six local languages so how to come across and how ha. to uh, ah vikas bhai Ashaji. you can ha ji bolie uh, listen um, actually i th- <laughs> you know how to put it na i mean because uh, A, a scientific attitude demands critique, critical understanding yes. of anything which is given to us. Yes. Your paper has given me an opportunity which I wanted to grab on another day, when one honourable vice chancellor copied a lot of text from NEP yes. and made part of it into. his presentation so i uh, have also there copied there are, from ministry uh, <laughs> archa ji archa ji and uh, that day i couldn't speak because it got very late <laughs> now with you i can take some liberty yes yes sure yeah. anyone so first can of take- all please if this policy is implemented hmm. no signs nothing because number 1 it has taken away those basic norms that were essential for a school to adhere to and it has brought in the concept of school complexes yeah. so that it can get rid of the rte act provisions that's number 1 number 2 because you have said this is going to be transformed but i mean i'm just responding to that number 2 this policy you are talking of the local language let me tell you what so howsoever bad the rte act had the provision of mother tongue as the medium of education up to 8th standard while this policy says up to 5th standard so there's a reduction please read carefully third mahan bharat swachh bharat this policy on the contrary allows and welcomes foreign investment in education and foreign universities okay so we, at one end they talk of vishwa guru and on the other hand us becomes their guru okay fourth this policy clearly clearly advocates single system which is absolutely absurd in a country like india anita the girl from this very province committed suicide and in her suicide note she wrote this was against the net that neat and she wrote whom are you expecting to perform equally in a system where everybody everybody receives differential education and this policy opens up more and more layers in our education system i can keep going and going and going there's no point doing it there is nothing i am part of a network of more than 200 organizations and i know what students and teachers and parents were demanding nothing of that nothing of that i can give you manifestos nothing of that gets reflected in it what it reflects what it reflects are those things which are written already in the document of the niti ayog and unfortunately in a magazine this is called education world which is given in air india and other private airlines which is read by the corporates and the bureaucrats and they are the people in that magazine demanding that state should withdraw from education and i'm telling you everybody present over here you can directly compare read sudhir bose's articles there the documents of the niti ayog and compare this nep everything another interesting thing six countries adopted national education policies you know when during the pandemic what does this tell you is it a vishwaguru which is adopting a policy 
or is it the international pressure of the global capital which is pushing them to adopt these policies? What is it? Where is your Swachh Bharat? The highest stage of corruption. Where is Swachh Bharat? I don't find that anywhere. I, if I go to England, I find their toilets. I can touch and find anything. I can't think of a railway station in our country where I will be able to touch and find where to go. Where is our Swachh Bharat? Now, eight years they have been in power with this Swachh Bharat. How this policy will, will, will promote that I fail to understand it absolutely. I really appeal with these strong observations and I can give a longish lecture whenever you invite me and wherever you invite me. Sure. Whosoever. But I beg very humbly but strongly yes. please look at the context. Every document has to be looked at. You know, you don't have to just reproduce what is there. You know, I mean, when they are saying scratching MPhil, this is such a loss. Half of the scholarships gone. They were giving, say, in the department, if there were 50 scholars, 25 in PhD and 25 in MPhil. Now, going of MPhil means now 25 scholars have lost their fellowships. That is their politics. Amen. Okay. Sir, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't take it on. I'm, and then please, I, I, since I respect you, trust you, I, I really may, I, I'm taking this opportunity to listen, I mean, to communicate this to everybody. Half of the scholarship is gone because the MPhil is gone. And now nothing is going to happen. Our department, I teach in a department which has a two-year MA program. We don't, I mean, we are already finding how can we have, we have enough rooms, hardly enough rooms for a two-year degree program. Do you think that we can run now two programs? One for one-year degree program of master's and another for two-year degree program. This is a design to actually shift research work to the colleges, convert them into autonomous community colleges so that they are freed from the parliamentary act that were passed in the 1950s and 60s. Why? Because then they will not be bound by maintaining full payment for teachers and, you know, cost-free education to students. They will be then charging fees, self-finance courses. That is the structure which is coming through this policy. Not what you are saying. This policy has to be read contextually and also in between the lines. It has a rhetoric, but what we need to find, not the rhetoric, we are scientists. We need to look at the imperative provisions. Yes. I, I really appeal, I hope, you know, I mean, yesterday Dr. Chatterjee, uh, Savasachi Chatterjee in our uh, history panel quoted Einstein. And I repeat here, it will help everybody. He said, Einstein was delivering a talk and then a young student stood up and he said, sir, your presentation is wrong because you are talking of two assumptions, while assumption one is related to assumption two, therefore there are not two assumptions, but only one assumption. And then after a while, Einstein quietly replied, saying, guys, apologies for wasting your time. He had that magnanimity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vikasji. I think you are giving me opportunity we will form such research committee where and they have asked us to write our uh, uh, suggestions, our, uh, 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 our recommendation to them. Let us see whether they are considering it and what you are telling is absolutely right. This is really, you have read between the lines. But yes, let us see how far we can go and definitely we will form research committee and we will send this guy. I think you are the editor of that journal, no? I will send my students' papers and my paper to you. You can edit and we will uh, we will definitely do in this line and it will go. Regarding MPhil, they have told us, okay, yes, those who have, uh, those who are there in the MPhil, their program will be completed, but next batch, they will not allow. And MPhil, when we were doing MPhil, that MPhil course was then linked to the PhD program. Sir, you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, sir.
2020, which was released, it is again aimed at, you know, making ourselves present in the frontiers. Now, technology you cannot be achieved without a, te a teaching and learning of technology. If you take the state of Karnataka, just a few months ago, there was a crisis that thousands of engineering seats are remaining unfilled. And a week ago, 43% of the faculty positions in AIMS, new AIMS, 10 AIMS that have been opened, they do not, why is it so? The one of the things I can say that why engineering seats are getting unfilled, because engineering is nothing but a degree hunting. You get one more label and you think by this one more label, I get more qualified than somebody who has one label less. Yes. There is no engineering. Let me tell you, engineering education has very little engineering. And this is where we have reduced our education system to medical education teaches so little medicine today, even with proliferation of medical colleges, that you cannot have, you do not find 43 seats with proper eligibility to fill those institutions. Now, this is a thing that has to be taken in totality. And let us look at this and judge the new education policy. What it is doing, he has talked about school education. My point is this in the field of higher education and, and where you want to make the cutting impact in cutting technology, you are years, years, years behind. Yes. Yeah. And I will tell you, I'll just give a comparison with only one country, because we call, con consider that country as our rival. That country is China. Yeah. Its R&D investment is 2.5% of its GDP where China's economy is five times higher, which means China's total investment in research and development is 20 times, close to 20 times higher. So this is the context, global context, in which we have to, and please look into the, let us have a re-look at the national education policy 2020 and connect it with the science, technology, innovation policy 2020. Last one, very little is talked about. I had referred in my talk. We have to have a relook at this and see the connectivity between the two. We can have this kind of recommendation and suggestions to the uh, government as they are asking to give us our reflections to them so that they can inquire. Dr. Vasudha Kamath in that committee was Vice Chancellor of SNDT Women University. We can send to her also and to the committee also when they are asking, why not? We can have our contribution like that. Okay, these are the areas which are needed. Okay, we can have better prospective. Nothing is wrong. At least from our part, our contribution can be there. So nice for listening and for having this kind of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think uh, when we are discussing new education policy, we must have a distinct look on it that this is the only noble policy which did not have any research or reference committees. Take the DS Kothari committee, 18 volumes of the various researches came and out of that this volume of education came. This is the only volume, uh, only research committee report, which did not have any background research. This is just the, uh, somebody's sermons that is coming to the, so to me it appears it is prepared by a scientist in an unscientific manner, not for the, not with the, based on the informed knowledge, but because of their own uh, type of imagination. Yes. Yeah.
unit. Uh, the, the point where we have reached is a very unfortunate the, uh, education policy which deserves most serious attention to make a better society that has been uh, placed in the neglected zone to prepare by somebody uh, having no concern with the society and that is being placed in the parliament without taking the parliament something else and, and then Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, thank, thank you, Vikas, for uh, uh, bringing the matter uh, to the house to the correct tone. Otherwise, we were uh, thought that we are getting misled by some kind of uh, information. So, thank you so much. And now, may I request uh, our president, this session president, to honor the uh, Dr. Harsha Merchant.
थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रोफेसर राना प्रताप सिंह यूनिवर्सिटी समथिंग यू हैव टू से थैंक ऑर्गेनाइजर एंड डॉक्टर दिवाकर फॉर गिविंग मी अपॉर्चुनिटी टू बी चेयर इन दिस वेरी वाइब्रेंट सेशन वे आर मेनी डिफरेंट डिसिप्लिनस वे आर डिस्कस एंड डिफरेंट व्यू पॉइंट्स वे आर ऑल्सो डिस्कस आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से दैट लाइक ह्यूमन माइंड इज वेरी बायोलॉजिकली वेरी कम्प्लेक्स the whole uh, knowledge system is complex and uh, it is evolving so uh, in a sp specialization is also important because we divide uh, classify the knowledge system in different groups and then try to understand it from various dimensions and uh, then the holistic interdisciplinarism is also important where we just join make them join and try to understand the holistic picture so i think from congresses like this i feel that uh, uh, we should uh, i think this is uh, covering the specialized lectures specialized discussions and simultaneously holistic discussions and it is very good to have these kind of discussions uh say in science i consider uh, the most important thing in uh, uh, in philosophical aspect that uh, uh, nothing is final nothing is ultimate whatever we are deliberating whatever knowledge is coming through various means through experimentation discussions analysis survey or what observations all these are uh just analyzed we reach to certain conclusion and then we again go for re uh, see re re searching it and always this this is open for research for re understanding re analysis re imagination and uh, see conclusion so finally this way knowledge grows and uh, uh, we can reach to rather a uh, certain better better outcome better understanding of society so uh, we are just discussing all those aspects uh, here in these conferences without i think we should not be very very uh, determined that what i understand is the final uh, i think uh, others we should listen others and we should try to think honestly honesty is very important in uh, knowledge generation and this way we can re reach towards something which can be near to true so this is i think evolution of knowledge uh, which i understand and uh, this is a very vibrant session we have different kind of discussions i thank the speakers dr harsha merchant and uh, another uh, speaker the young girl and uh, i thank the discussants uh, especially dr gupta and others who added many new dimension to these aspects so that different kind of view points could emerge and then our audience is uh, free to uh, explore in their own way and try to reach to more uh, say a more realistic a uh, situation on the energy these aspect thank you very much thank you friends the uh, thank you sir thank you for this uh, session and now we are breaking for lunch and after that uh, we will be here by two uh, for an interactive session uh, in fact uh, we earlier with tradition we have the task force uh, uh, interaction Uh, if the task force had come up from some of the uh, documents we will discuss that otherwise we will have some interaction about the sessions and other emerging issues uh, fine so one two to three will be here uh, interacting about the congress and by three we will have here the validity session